Hawthorne kicking to the right, Footscray kicking to the left. It's Purser and Langford, line ball. Purser gets it out of the second attempt, picked up by Foster, playing at half forward, it would appear at the moment. Down towards Green, could have marked that one, I thought. Edmund breaks the tackle well from Green, gets clear. Here's a mark, be the first goal to Footscray. All Saul has to do is stand up and kick it. Well, I don't know if he meant that for him, Pete, but no, I don't think he did, Lou, but it doesn't matter. The result's does it? the same, Bob. A bad defence by Hawthorne. A man loose in the goal square when their captain, Jim Edmund, had the ball. And Footscray will get first goal. And they will lead by six points inside the minute mark of the game. There it is. First blood of the Bulldogs. And that's a great start. There's a fight at the other end of the ground. Oh, it's a real dish-up. Well, Dunstan and Kennedy are having a great go. And Hardy's there to help out. Matthew's trying to separate the players. But still, Kennedy and Dunstall had it. Now, Kennedy, uh, they've quietened down. They're having another bit of a dish up there, too. Well, in between times, uh, umpire Glenn James warned uh, Jim Edmund for whacking um, Terry Wallace. and uh, He doesn't get much much of a Biff Wallace, does he? Yeah. Well, he and uh, Malin were... I don't say Wallace was handing anything out, but Malin was uh, doing a bit. And so, uh, Footscray... But they've got everything to gain and nothing to lose. I'm not being critical of Footscray. It's an all-or-nothing deal. And uh, so they're out to win. I think with that first goal on the board, they should settle down now and play football because that's a great start for them. But I wouldn't worry about the man as yet. Well, it was a gift start to Footscray. A minute and 45 seconds gone, opening term. Versa, that's two hit outs. Maybe Hawthorne will regret leaving Burn out of the side. Hawthorne getting their first free kick. A little earlier than last week, it was 22 minutes into the term. Lester Smith getting a 15 metre penalty. And didn't we see a few of those last week? Lister Smith out towards left half forward. Brereton, good mark. Late on the scene, Piat. He might get another 15 metres here. In fact, he has. That was a silly tackle from Neil Piat. Certainly was, Pete. And uh, at that particular end of the ground, so that you can't afford to give 15 metre Peters away from there. Now, Pert going across after Brereton to take the mark. Philly's playing. This could uh, result in a goal. So Dermot Brereton now lining up. There's the kick by uh, Dermot Brereton. And it's one point. So two and a half minutes gone of this first quarter of the uh, preliminary final for 1985. It's Footscray, one goal, six points. Their goal coming within 40 seconds of the start of the game. And Hawthorne, a one point only. Out it goes now to Hawkins and D.P. Domenico. The last time these two met, uh, Hawkins was well on top. D.P. Domenico gets a hand pass. He goes over the line with the ball, and the umpire said it's out of bounds. Well, the last two starts... Uh, Bob, uh, Hawkins has had the better of D.P. at a minute ago. Oh, well, Hawkins is an excellent player, and what a wonderful game he played last week. Knocked out by Persa, dominating the knockouts from the uh, rucks or the centre bounces. A bit of a scrimmage as D.P. at a minute ago tries to get through the pack. He tried to crush through that time, and the umpire will ball it up. Round about uh, 60 metres out from the Hawthorne goal. They're one behind to uh, Footscray, one goal. Knocked out by uh, Persa, and picked up by Marlon. What a game he played. Well smothered by D.P. and a minute ago, kicked off the ground, actually. But he took uh, Kennedy's hand with him that time as Royal, and the ball is out of bounds. Well, they let him have a go now with that. Uh, there's no such rule as kicking in danger, is there, Bob? That's fair enough as far as I'm concerned, Lou. I'll go along with it, uh, being an old kicker from way back as the ball finally gets <laughs> back. Now. Picked up there this time by McPherson. They're into attack again. The ball driven over Footscray's half-forward line. Punched out again, coming in as Morris, judges the ball, he runs in circles. Back it goes to Swab, he goes down to Ayres. Ayres with a short pass, picked up by Lovebridge on the second grab. Out wide, going for the boundary line, the ball is out of bounds on the centre wing position on the outer side. We're just over the four-minute mark of this first quarter. Footscray, one goal, six points to Hawthorne, one behind only. Langford and Purser. Versa again, hit it straight to Wallace though on this occasion, handy for Hawthorne, tries to break the tackle from May, but almost caught with the ball. Was that too high? Yes it was, but the advantage rule paid, Lovebridge to Lester Smith, starting off well for Hawthorne, breaks that tackle, lovely sidestep, longer half forward, Knights. Knights interviewed on Channel 7 last night, sounded very croaky with a heavy cold. But selectors not in doubt as to his ability this afternoon. Brereton snaps up the goal, will be out of bounds or one point. Umpires confer, it's a behind. And so Hawthorne, two points. Footscray, six. Footscray leading, leading by four. And Dermot Brereton kicking both of those points. And uh, 
both sides really going in at the moment. Well, Brown's off to a better start uh, this week than he's been for the whole tour. Oh, Hardy in trouble. Caught, is he with the ball? He should be. Yeah. Now, if he's not in possession, what was he? Well, I think he was that... lying on top of it, was he, Bob? He's still got the ball. Now, he hasn't attempted to punch it he or kick it. He has not punched it. He is in possession. So perhaps uh, Brad Hardy a little bit lucky. Brereton well, just about threw that, but picked up by McPherson. Up toward the half-back line. Deep to Medico and Hawkins. Knocked away by Wallace the foot straight. Taken by Foster. Long hand pass. Almost intercepted. Handley's there. So too Langford. Breaks one tackle. Tries to get the hand pass out. Picked up by Lester Smith on centre wing. Starting well for Hawthorne. That's his third position. Bad disposal though. The mark taken by McPherson at half-back. Steve McPherson tries to get around Burton, does so. Goes out wide towards the flank. Looks pretty slippery. What a great oh. mark, though, just the same. That was, uh, be it. Now takes the hand pass back. Long to half forward. Three foot straight players are there. Lovely's got offloaded by Wallace. In the meantime, it's picked up by Royal. Lovely smother by Handley. And grabs him again. Wallace looking for a free kick, but it's uh, Ludwig to take the ball out of the pack for Hawthorne. Ludwig well set, but it's still going. No Footscray player running at him. He's gone for a pass, trying to find Brereton. Couldn't do so. Kennedy's there. Matthews breaks one tackle. Gives it to Kennedy. Kennedy from 12 metres out puts through Hawthorne's first. Excellent play by Lee Matthews on that occasion. And it wasn't a nice piece of disposal by Ludwig coming down the ground, but nonetheless it was going in the right direction. And... Uh, as we see Kennedy miss one that he possibly should have marked and Matthews a quick hand pass to Kennedy who puts through Hawthorne's first goal. Plus the fact, uh, Bob, what helped that situation the bad play on the part of Royal. He fumbled three or four times there at centre half forward for Footscray. Yes, it didn't help, Luke. Certainly didn't help. We're back in the centre now, just over seven minutes gone. Hawthorne in front by two points. They're one goal, two eight points to Footscray, one uh, goal, six points. Back to Purser again. He's got every knockout from the centre bounce as Malin comes out of the pack. He's grabbed, the umpire said it'll be a ball up around about the centre field area again. And what a game Malin played last week. He was a very uh, constructive footballer. Ball up. Purser again, but pushed on by E. He taps the ball back, it goes over there now to uh, Russo. Russo back looking for Langford, kicked off Ooh. by Malin. Didn't mess about that time. And he took Langford's fingers with him, and the ball is over the line and out of bounds on the centre wing position. Two points the difference, just on the eight-minute mark of this first quarter, the 1985 preliminary final. The winner to go into the grand final. Wallace couldn't get clear. Actually threw that one out. Daniels goes for the boundary line. Did he do it deliberately? No, the umpire said. It'll be a throw-in from up towards uh, Hawthorne's half-fourth line, about 80 metres around from their goal. Once again, it's Purser doing battle with Langford. Well, it's a push in the back to uh, oh, Purser. That's a charity, are you? Well, he's doing a pretty good job on the ruck so far. Certainly a lot different to what he did against Langford the last time these two sides met. Punched out by Lester Smith. A chance down for Hawkins. Going after Miss Morris. Showing a lot of pace. But he goes down. Hawkins with a hand pass. Over to Edmund. This looks dangerous from Hawthorne's point of view. Over to Sewell. It's too long, but Sewell picks it up on the boundary line. A running shot for goal, and what about the result? It's off target and through for one point. So it's Footscray. One goal, one, seven points to Hawthorne. One goal, two, eight, as we approach the nine-minute mark of this, the first quarter. Number two for Hawthorne, Chris Mew. To bring the ball back, he favours the member stand side. Looking out there for Dippy Domenico. Has to knock the ball clear. He'll do some shepherding for Russell Green. That's effective. Bede. Short pass. Up to the centre wing position. Brereton and Cordy tangle. The mark is taken by Russo. It's against Brereton, I think. Well, up by Glenn James has made a decision. Which way is it going? Going to Footscray. Well, that's a 15-metre penalty if I've ever seen one. Time-wise, well, I think he should have had his number taken. Well, no, no. Uh, Russo thought it was his mark, so I agree with what the umpire has done. Cordy. In front, Langford. Purser from the back. Mahaja runs into plenty of trouble there. Chance for Wallace to get the ball. Does. Well, Shepard it again. The Hawthorne centre man picking up kicks early. Wallace down to half forward. Matthews had to try and get out of the road of one of his own players. Hawthorne skipper down to half forward, trying to find Brereton, and Brereton takes the mark. Has he? No, he hasn't played it. Hardy right there with him. Loveridge. 
Long shot in towards Kennedy. Kennedy and Brian Cordy. Brian Cordy going the punch. Good defence by the Footscray player. It's out of bounds. Boundary throw in left forward pocket for Hawthorne. On well, both sides making plenty of mistakes and fumbling a lot, Bob. I suppose that's understandable in a match like this. It is in a finals game, Lou, and this is a, a do or die struggle. So uh, once this is over, you're out of it. So any wonder there's a few mistakes. There's a fight between the two Kennedys. I don't think they're related. Three kick to John Kennedy. Well, I said there was a fight, Bob. Uh, did you see any more of it than I did? Well, obviously, Glenn James looked down. He, he signalled that uh, John Kennedy was tackled too high. And, uh, you know, when the ball's not there, Rick Kennedy's a, a foolish boy if uh, well, the ball basically had just left. So Rick shouldn't give away free kicks in that manner. I think both sides should uh, perhaps cool it a little bit. Kennedy a chance for his second goal, and he's got it. Two goals to John Kennedy. And in the preliminary final, Hawthorne 2-2-14, two, two, Footscray 1-1-7 one, one, at BFL Park. Well, we may be able to pick that up again, perhaps on the replay. No, I think the ball had gone away and uh, our cameras had followed the ball. It was behind play and umpire Glenn James, uh, having played uh, you know, the game before, knows that you look back and see what's going on behind play and Rick Kennedy paying the penalty. Yes, the umpires don't watch the ball. They... Watch the ground before and after. Seven points the difference in favour of Hawthorne. 11 and a half minutes got in the first quarter. Knocked out by Hawthorne from the circle. Picked up by Deepi Domenico. And he'll get a free kick. Did seem to be a pretty fair tackle. But the umpire says it's a Hawthorne free from the circle to be taken by their rugged winger. 14 plays seven in favour of Hawthorne. Down it goes tonight. Well covered that time by Peart. Malin missed that completely. But he won't give in. He goes after it again. Gets a hand out to Rod Mc, uh, Steve McPherson, who's doing pretty well down there in defence. Up there towards half for a chance for Bandle, he's got it. No, he didn't pay that mark. I'd have paid, but he recovered pretty well. Goes for a pass, and it's a beauty right down Cyril Slope. He did play it, Lou, but when Bandle played on, uh, by Glenn James allowed him to. Well, OK, yeah, that was great play on the part of Bamblett. And that's a magnificent pass by Les Bamblett. Still playing in the pocket, Bob. Yes, Pete, and uh, Bamblett really playing as a half-forward flanker rather than the pocket. Waiting on uh, Sewell to have that shot at goal. Let's see the result. It's one point, so Footscray off target that time. One goal, 2-8. The Footscray to Hawthorne, two goals, 2 40. Sewell's kicked the, the Footscray total so far, Lou, one goal, two. OK, and we're just on the 13 minute mark of this first quarter of the preliminary final. Out it goes to Loveridge, takes an easy mark. He and uh, Purse are having a bit of a scrimmage there, but not very serious. A 15 metre penalty, so it is pretty serious. Loveridge takes full advantage of that, goes for a bounce. No one coming within Cooey, so he goes for the long kick. Hawkins at the back, goes the big punch away from DP at Domenico. The ball picked up now by uh, Russo, taken away that time by McQueen. Over it goes now, and uh, McPherson again doing a great job. Looking down there, he's got it. He got away from you this time, and he's got plenty of room to move about. That ought to please Nick Cobham. That's Beasley. Beasley got the ball, but they're certainly giving him a lot more room the last two weeks, Bob. I think they learned from their mistake the first time, and, uh, and there's no doubt that uh, any good coach or any good side will learn from a mistake when it really doesn't come off. Well, Beasley would be about uh, 35 to 40 metres out on a 45 degree angle. And of course, this goal will make scores dead level. Now, that is a goal, and that's Beasley's first, and scores dead level as we approach the 14 minute mark of this preliminary final for 1985. Two goals, two 14 points apiece. And Steve McPherson across the half back line. Uh, Footscray's half back line is Steve McPherson. And Neil Cordy and Brian Cordy. And as we watched on replay, McPherson putting the ball down. And now the kick by Beasley that goes through to even the scores. But Stephen McPherson doing an excellent job at half back. 14 and a half minutes got in the first quarter. Wallace with Footscray. Foster. Malin. Over on centre wing. Down to right half forward looking for Sewell. He takes the mark just inside the boundary line, I think. Looks a bit too tall and too good for Gary Ayres at the moment. A play on call. He does over to Brian Royal. He kicked five last week. Trying to get around uh, Ayres. Does so. Every which way but loose. McLean. Forward pocket right. Chance for Bandit at the back, but it's out of bounds. After Mew got a hand of the ball, it will be a boundary throw-in. Left forward pocket for Footscray. Scores did level in the preliminary final. Well, at this stage of the game, I think I would swap Ayres and Morris, personally. 
He says doesn't have the height to combat Sewell. Could have pushed Sewell in the back there too, just about. I don't think it's so much height as uh, not quite checking. McLean, that's a goal. Puts they lead by six points. His first goal. Great snapshot. Bulldogs looking good at the moment. Scoreboard 3 2 20 to 2 2 14. Bob, I think it's a good move having uh, McLean down there with Bam because it's given a lot of pace to that forward line that's been lacking over the last couple of weeks. Yes, well, um, you know, McLean actually is uh, playing on the wing at the moment. And, uh, well, no, he's not really on the wing. Daniels is on the wing. And uh, McLean virtually uh, as a, a half forward come over. It is a good move, Lou. Approaching the 16-minute mark of the first quarter, McLean's first goal gives Footscray the lead of six points, 20 plays 14 in the 85 preliminary final, knocked down by Langford. Chance for Handley. Purser caught with the ball, held it for a fortnight. That's right, made no attempt, Pete. Handley's free kick. And over the Hawthorne half four line, Matthews and Hardy. Hardy goes down to the umpire, set a free kick. Well, and Matthews disgusted with that one. But as Bob Skilton said, he pushed him in the back. Now it goes towards the wing position. Hawkins and Di Pietromenico having a great battle. Picked up by Di Pietromenico, but it, it's out of bounds. Out of bounds on that centre wing position. 16 and a half minutes gone. And Footscray are three goals, 220. To Hawthorne, two goals, 240. And it's certainly a different Footscray side to the last time these two sides met. Bob? Well, we did expect that, Lou. You, you, sides like who, who finished second on the ladder just do not put in uh, shocking efforts like that twice in a row or twice in three weeks. Steve McPherson starring down there at half back gets the ball back it's picked up by Ayres from Di Pietromenico. McPherson in front the ball tapped out uh, Brereton couldn't pick it up. Knocked out by Cordy he was tripped the umpire said he was grabbed or pushed in the back and Cordy will take that free kick or is it going to be McPherson? Morris is on saw Bob as you predicted. McPherson goes for a pass it's okay it's marked oh he dropped that McLean Coming in as Edmund, uh, he was grabbed, he throws the ball away. Going after it now as McLean covers the ball. And the umpire said he got one too high. And he'll take the free kick out there at half forward for Footscray. They're in front by six points. Short pass, it's OK. And once again, Sewell's got it. And that's mark number four down there in the forward pocket. He's already kicked one goal. Punched out by Mew. Picked up by Ayres, scouting out well. Gives a wild kick out towards that half-back line. Coming in to meet it now is McLean and Di Pietromenico. It's McLean going out, but the Di Pietromenico won't give him an inch, and the umpire said it's holding the ball <laughs> against Di Pietromenico. Oh, what ball? He made the play. But he made the play. I'll go along with a 15-metre penalty there for McLean, who's doing a bit of damage down there on the forward line, incidentally. It's his eighth possession as the ball is a uh, fourth possession, fifth possession, I should say, off the top of the pack. Well picked up by Lester Smith, goes for a short pass, it's okay. He's found Rodney Eade there in the back bucket, right across the goals, could be dangerous, but luckily for Hawthorne, Russell's there, takes the mark, breaks clear, suits it out wide, looking for uh, Brereton. Oh, that's a great mark and a free kick, and Brereton's got the ball out there on the centre wing position for Hawthorne. Brereton left half forward or left uh, centre wing as we watch the mark in replay. Good use of the body. Cordy unable to punch the ball clear. It's up to half forward now. And Steve McPherson. Free kick tonight, I'd say. Doing a great job down there, but it will, as Bob Skilton mentioned, be a free kick to the Hawthorne high flyer. Knights back into the side today. Pierre did line up at centre half back. Pete, but almost within a minute of play, Cordy went on to. Uh, Centre half back and tee it to Knights. Well, he's got another chance, Knights. Luckily for Hawthorne because it was shocking disposal. Knights from left half forward flank. Couldn't score from there. And then again, a poor kick out of bounds. I think maybe touched off the hands. It is Hardy looking for a foot spray free kick, but there is none there. And it will be a boundary throw in in Hawthorne's left forward pocket. They trail at the 19 minute mark of the term. You can see the scoreboard there. Footscray by six points. In front, Kennedy and Purser. Knocked down by Kennedy. Stolen by Malin. Deep here to Minico. Ball out to Hawkins. Ball out to Hardy. Hardy and Matthews. There's a couple of speedsters. Ayres appreciating, I think, the move away. He started, I think, in the previous match against uh, Jim Edmund. On the Footscray skipper. He's been moved back to him now. Wallace for Footscray. Seem to get one a bit too high. The umpire says no free kick. Green gives the hand pass out. Green again. Another chance. Wallace. Oh, Kennedy grabbed too high. Will take a free kick at half forward. 
but he's a long way from goal, probably about 60 metres. He's kicked Hawthorne's two goals so far. As Lewis said earlier, Footscray showing far more aggression today than they were, and that's the reason to tackle too high by Steve McPherson against John Kennedy. Nonetheless, Steve McPherson has been a very good player across the half-back line. That's a real nine-iron golf shot, if we could borrow an analogy. It uh, went a mile in the air. Wallace and Malin. Wallace flicks out the hand pass. Knight's just uh, almost in the goal square. Gets it back to Matthews. Matthews looks for a free kick. Didn't get one. Kennedy and Dunstall. Kennedy caught. No. Ball out from Cordy. Towards the half-back line. A chance for Steve Wallace, but the ball beats him over the boundary line. Ball out of bounds on the Hawthorne's half forward run about 80 metres around from their goal. That's what you'll call leading the game go from an umpire point of view. I'd reckon that couple of slow moves on the part of Hawthorne players that they weren't moving too quickly the ball out of bounds better to come back into play six points the difference in favor of uh, Footscray the ball knocked out now picked up by Brian Cor uh, Brian Cordy Green's got a chance knocked out by McLean the fumble still fumbling Hawthorne as it comes back to McLean looking a dangerous player up to this stage of the match good play on the part of Hawkins a hand pass to Rod McGuff, Steve McPherson, the best player on the ground so far. Over to Hardy, got plenty of room to move. Goes out wide looking for Edmund, but Ayers is there, goes the punch, defensive play on the part of Ayers, and the right play, and the ball is out of bounds. Out of bounds about 70 metres around from the Footscray goal now. And as Bob Skilton said before, certainly a different Footscray side to these uh, when these two sides met the last time. Down it comes now to Foster, a hand pass coming out to Edmund. Edmonds kick is up there towards Beasley and New Bad. He's got it, Beasley. I think he might have pushed him in the back, but the umpire didn't spot it. I think he gave him the best push in the back you've seen for a long time. He's the full forward, though, Lou. As we watch on replay. Oh, a little bit of a nudge, but it wasn't no. that serious, was it? No well, free kick. Enough a, to put him off balance, Bob. In a position where I don't think umpire James could see it anyway, and uh, I wouldn't have paid it personally. No. OK, uh, of course, Beasley a chance to kick goal number two. And he was in uh, a lot of trouble against Mew the last time. There's the kick. Has he missed that? Oh, that's a shocker. Should never have missed that, Simon Beasley. So it's three goals, 321. Footscray to Hawthorne, two goals, 214. 22 and a half minutes gone of this first uh, quarter. Ball back into play again. Making good uh, position that time was he. Takes the ball out there at half back. Goes for a short pass, looking for Kennedy. He's done a pretty good job on this first quarter, too. We've got two goals on the board so far, Luke. Not a bad effort. Kennedy's kick is not a good one. It's a shocker. It's out of bounds. 15 metres, Luke. 15 metres, so he could be a bit lucky. I think Kennedy, in this first quarter, has received three free kicks too, which has helped a bit. So Kennedy out there now on the centre wing position. Goes for a short pass. And Matthews goes down. Nearly a free kick to Lee Matthews, but the umpire didn't think so. Down goes Di Pietro Manico. Taps it out looking for Matthews again, but he didn't exert any pressure that time when the ball goes out of bounds. So it's out of bounds about 75 metres around from the Hawthorne goal, and they're trailing by seven points into the quarter by just on 23 and a half minutes. Ball grabbed here by Wallace, spins out of the pack nicely, goes for a kick looking for Matthews again, but he's well attended to by Hardy, and the ball is out of bounds. A little closer to the Hawthorne goal, about 50 metres out uh, on that half-forward flank position. Footscray leading by seven points at the 23 and three-quarter minute mark of the term. Kennedy and Purser. Purser simply too tall. Wallace sharked it beautifully, got it over to Brewerton. Dunstall in front takes a good mark. Started off having ringside with the wrestlers with Kennedy. Footscray fullback gave a free kick to his Hawthorne namesake. And now Dunstall, his opponent, has a chance to put through a goal. Dunstall directly in front of goal would be the straightest kick in the Hawthorne side. What's he done with that one? It's a goal. Dunstall putting through his first. It's Hawthorne's third. One point the difference in the preliminary final. 3-3 three, three to 3-2 three, at VFL Park. It's a nice piece of play by Dermot Brereton there. As we watch on replay, Purser gets a tap, Wallace gets a hand pass to Brereton, and Brereton hooks the ball back into what we term as the corridor down the centre of the ground, and so Jason Dunstall putting it through. Sewell, Beasley and McLean, goal kickers for Footscray, for Kennedy, for uh, Hawthorne, Kennedy two, and Dunstall one. How are your meetings in shorts and talls, Bob? I don't go that far, Lou. Approaching the time-on period of the first quarter, one point the difference now. 
That is a high tackle, surely. And Foster will take the free kick. Well, that was one of the surprise moves by uh, Hawthorne of uh, Footscray Bubbers to play Foster at centre half forward because he's played most of his football with the Bulldogs at centre half back. Yes, and done a great job of it, Lou. But uh, they, they did struggle at centre half forward last week, and uh, they really can't fill that position. And Foster is a goer. At the back, Schwab. Not a long kick. Green takes the mark in front of McLean. Thought about playing on. McLean not letting him go. Green will be looking for an improved performance today too. He was taken from the field last week. A rarity, certainly, since crossing from St Kilda a few years back. Great mark by Brereton on centre wing. Bad hand pass, though, by the Hawthorne half-forward. Gives Footscray possession. Neil Cordy up the half-forward. Out comes Morrison, takes the grab in front of Sewell. He was moved there after Sewell proved too tall for Gary Ayres, and he's at uh, right half-back flank. Into the quarter by 26 minutes. A point the difference in favour of Footscray. A short pass and marked here by Lovely. Lovery's out there at half-back, looks for a lead, goes right across to centre half-back, didn't gather any distance at all, but a good hand pass from Lester Smith over to Russell, puts them back into attack again. A bit of a juggle that time by uh, Langford, kicked off the ground by Hawkins, good play, didn't mess about. Lester Smith worked without the ball, this allows uh, Beasley to get it over to Royal, back it goes now to Daniels, a long shot at goal, this could be all right, no, it's off target, no, it's a mark, a mark to Sewell, and what a game he's playing down there in, uh, on the forward line. He's playing a magnificent game. He's gone for a short Play pass. On. It'll be OK and marked by Daniels in a far better position, even though he may be a bit further out. You can see the distance and the angle there on screen. He's been a dangerous player down there, Bob. Yes, um, he picked up a couple of kicks now. And, uh, There's the kick by Daniels. You're talking about uh, Sewell, Lou? Yeah, Sewell, Bob. Oh, I thought you were talking about Daniels then, but... Uh, and Sewell has been an excellent player. He's really, um, and they have had a two-pronged attack uh, with both Beasley and Sewell. Sewell has been leading and making, and giving them something to kick to. He's been a fine player. Ball back into play again. Out there towards Green and McLean. Punched away by McLean. At least he's kept it uh, in the attacking zone for Footscray. About 50, 60 metres out from the Footscray goal. And they're in front by uh, two points. 20 plays, 22. Knocked out by Purse, a ripper there. Oh, picked up by Edmund, he was grabbed around the neck. That was a nice knockout that time by Purser. But Edmund gets the free kick and the uh, Footscray skipper would be about 50 metres out from goal. Pretty acute angle. I doubt whether he'll make the distance. Just on the 28-minute mark. And Footscray in front by two points, and this would be a handy goal if he could kick this one. There she is on its way. Oh, that's a long kick, and what a goal by the captain. And they're the sort of goals that lift the entire side. The scoreboard, three goals, two, 20 foot, the uh, Hawthorne, the foot grade, four goals, four, 28. Now, to use an old cliche, Lou, you could say that that is a captain's goal. And because uh, you had just said that he might have been a little bit too far out, but an exceptional kick by Jim Edmund, and they're the sort of things that lift the whole team. Great torpedo punt goal by Jim Edmund. 28 players, 20. Footscray getting away a little bit now. Eight points at it in the preliminary final. Knocked down by Langford. Picked up by Dippy to Benico, the half forward. Steve McPherson there, overrunning the ball. Brereton taps it back, trying to find Matthews, but may have intercepts beautifully for Footscray. At back to Steve McPherson. Footscray's best defender by a mile. Out to Brian Cordy. Footscray looking the goods at the moment. Brad Hardy, they're full of running. A lot better Footscray side than we saw last week. Green, uh, Ede just about top Persa. That's on behind play between those two. Play goes on downfield in the meantime. Ayers and uh, Bamblett, it's out of bounds. Footscray's right forward pocket. Now by having a word to Persa behind play. What Footscray are doing too, Bob, they're chasing a lot better than they did the last time against Torfham. That was an example there with uh, McLean knocking the ball and keeping it in their attacking zone. Yes, and um, Brad Hardy is not trying to run up the ground and he's giving Matthews a lesson at the moment. Knocked down by Stuhl. Edmund, another goal, perhaps if he's accurate, not this time. And the Footscray skipper, I think, has put that out of bounds on the full. It will be a Hawthorne free kick in the left back pocket at the 29 and a half minute mark of the opening term, which has been a good one for Footscray. Hardy forcing Matthews to play a different type of game at the moment. Lee not used to people taking chances and leaving him. Ayers from left back pocket. It's a free kick for uh, Langford. interference. Going to Langford, and Langford also getting a 15 metre penalty. 
Well, there's no excuse for a person doing that because it's giving away 15 uh, metres unnecessarily, Bob. I think he might have just been saving time and hoping that they all that everybody would be picked up, Lou. Yes, especially as there's over 30 minutes gone in the quarter and the siren can't be too far away. Big pack of players out there. Comes out to Steve McPherson again, but it's a holding the man decision. To who? Cordy. No, it's going to Hawkins. No, it's going to Hawkins. Hawkins from right half back. He's gone out wide towards the right half forward flank, looking for Edmund or Hardy. Lovely tap on by the skipper, gets it back to Hardy. Beautiful play, Footscray on to Royal, but it's a bad hand pass. Lester Smith hurriedly gets rid of it over the boundary line, and it will be a boundary throw in at right half forward for Footscray again as we approach the 31 minute mark of the turn. Footscray's aggressive tackling have upset Hawthorne a little bit, Lou. Certainly has, and uh, they're just keeping the ball back in their attacking zone all the time, even though they've got no chance of picking it up, Bob. Knocked down to uh, Loveridge, good tackle by Edmund. Lester Smith grabs it right on the siren. Good quarter for Footscray. And they certainly took the points in the opening stanza. 4-4-28, leading Hawthorne 3-2. Fell Park, Footscray by eight points. The ground for Matthews. One of the changes made by Alan Jeans as Hawthorne swing into attack through Loveridge. Good smother by Brereton. Looks for the hand pass to Kennedy. Excellent play, but he just couldn't take the pass. McLean tackled well. Loose ball, half forward for Hawthorne. Trying to crash through McPherson, gets it back to Hardy, who had a brilliant first term. Hardy out towards right centre wing for Footscray, underneath it, Eid for Hawthorne, and gets offloaded by Foster. It amazes me that there's not 15 men, 15 metres paid for cases like that. It was uh, a little late. Deep here to Medico and Neil Cordy Tangle, long hand pass by Hawkins, his opponent out to Steve Wallace, excellent play again from Footscray, Wallace to half forward, he's trying to find Sewell, man of the match so far, five marks in the first quarter Sewell, he kicked the first goal, he won't kick one from there, the pass, looking for Beasley, won't quite reach him, Bamblett, tries to get it further forward, picked up by Lester Smith and got steamrolled by Foster. He took his eye off the ball there. A couple of moments before, and a dangerous kick now, which comes off. Green from half back. Well, there's a wrestle down there between Burton and Neil Cordy now. Bob, how can they tell who's got hold of who? Well, I think uh, in that case, Glenn James was probably on the right side because he could see just who was holding who. Burton had the front position. I think that made a difference. Burton takes the free kick from half forward. Oh, oh, oh Handley made a move of that one. Malin. Bad hand pass, still plenty of mistakes made by both sides. Wallace, oh, bad hand pass, picked up by McLean. Hawthorne fumbling. McLean played a great first quarter as well. Here he goes on centre wing. Looks for Royal. Breaks the tackle well. Again to McLean. Back to Royal, plenty of time. Has a long shot at goal. Beasley and New. Great play, Footscray! Excellent from McLean. He put it through for Footscray's fifth. Or is it Bamlet? What a great piece of play. 3-2 to 5-4. It was magnificent play on the part of Bamlet that time, and uh, good play on the part of McLean coming down the ground, Bob. It certainly was, Lou, and on replay we see it right on the line, but he certainly he kicked it before the line as far as I was concerned. Uh, and uh, so, it, for mine, it was a goal, but again, Hawthorne's Poor disposal upfield, setting it up. Well, uh, Footscray looking pretty good against the breeze. The ball knocked out by Purser, dominating the centre bounces. Back it goes out there towards the wing position. A strong mark taken there by uh, Rodney E. Umpire gets it away, but he still gets his kick over the centre half. Forward position, flying high was Judge. There's the loose man in defence. That's McLean getting a hand pass out again to court. That's a bad hand pass. Good play on the part of Wallace. Gets a hand pass back to Green. And Hawthorne going to attack the deep Pierre Domenico. It's too long. He's not playing too well today either. Bit of fumbling going on by Dunster, but on his back there is Kennedy. The umpire said play on as John Kennedy comes out with a hand pass. Well smothered by Hardy. And Hawthorne making plenty of mistakes. The ball still in play. Back it goes now to deep Pierre Domenico and Hardy having a great wrestle there. He was grabbed by the foot, Hardy. He's playing a pretty good game down there in defence. Playing an excellent game, Lou. He's been an excellent player down there. They have to take Matthews off. That's how well he was going. That's his eighth possession as he drops the ball a bit short. Ball punched out to Wallace again. He goes for a short pass. It's okay. Grabbed by Loveridge. 
Loveridge kicks it over the half forward line. Back it goes to Dunstall and Kennedy. Fly high was Browden. It's about the only forward that got firing down there at the moment. That's his fourth mark. Well, maybe the forwards would fire a lot more, Lou, if Hawthorne were, were, were not being so indirect. If, if they would go straight down the ground and go long, then they may have a chance up forward. But if you're going to zigzag all over the, the ground and take your time getting up there, what chance have forwards got? 14 points the difference as Browden comes in for goal number one. There she is on its way. But he's hooked that as he, and it's through for one point. That's two, uh, three behinds to uh, Brewerton so far on the match. Three goals, 321 Hawthorne. The Footscray, five goals, 434. And that's certainly a different side now. A good pass and a good mark taken there by Pitt, except that uh, Hardy took a bit of a chance. Should have gone for the long kick, but it's worked out OK. Pitt's kick is a short one. Coming in to take the mark is Hawkins. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Out it goes now to Purser. And he's got the mark out there on the centre wing position. A long hand pass coming over to Brian Cordy. Back it goes to his brother Brian. A Neil, I should say, over to McLean. He's playing a great game. Shows a lot of pace. He's grabbed by length, but gets the hand pass back there to Foster. Tries to get around Lester Smith. Slips over. He gets around him all right. Goes down. McLean taps the ball on there to Edmund. Shoots it back. Across there towards the half forward flank, it hits the deck as they go now for Royal. And what's he done with it? Hit the, hit post. the post. So Footscray, by golly, they're playing with some determination here today, Bob. And certainly are, Lou, and uh, it was great play out there from um, both Edmund and Foster, who Foster didn't do a great deal, but he kept the ball in the forward line. Morris's long kick, straight for Footscray is Neil Cordy. Cordy at half forward, goes for a short pass. Looking for Daniels, he's got him. Yeah, Daniels only about 30 metres out from goal, on a slight angle. Classy mark. Decides to play on. Oh, he's put the ball pretty high for Beasley. Is punches it clear. One point. So still Footscray doing it well. By 15 points, increasing their lead all the time. The Hawthorne bench not looking particularly happy at the moment, and they haven't got much to be happy about. A lot of players down. Mew. Short pass to Loveridge. He's not one of them. Loveridge from half-back. Wobbles the punt kick up towards centre wing. Steve McPherson had a great first quarter. Gets clear of Dunstall. Good tackle, good tackle. Kennedy, he's kicked two goals for Hawthorne. Gives it over to Russo. Russo should score from there. 25 metres out. And... The understatement of the day so far would be to say it's a badly needed goal for Hawthorne. 4-3 yes, to 5-6. What magnificent play by Dunstall. Certainly was, Bob. You know, it, that's uh, an example to, to kids that you've got to chase and chase and chase. And Steve McPherson, I don't think, realised that Dunstall was going to be there. Then he Dunstall tapped it on, allowed Kennedy to get it. And that's a, that won't go in the score books as Jason Dunstall's goal, but it really is. Seven minutes got in the first quarter. Yes, the sort of tackle that coaches are really proud of. 27 plays, 36. Second term action from BFL Park. Knocked down by Langford, but it's picked up by Hawkins for Footscray. Hawkins to half forward. Schwab and Edmund. Stolen by Morris. Morris from centre half back. Long kick up over the centre line. And the pack set themselves. Oh, they all went down. Two Footscray players. Crashed, chance down. Oh. Knocked on by Purser. <laughs> over to Brian Gordy. A perfect pass. The way actually was a bit too long. In goes Edmund, up ends Ayers. Tap back beautifully there to Royal. A long kick up there looking for Beasley out in front. The pack fly. No one can take the mark. Loveridge scouting out beautifully that time. Takes it away. Oh, from I the saw that one go. And there's a box on behind play here now. We see Bamble in that. There's two uh, Hawthorne players. And I think Beasley might be. No, he's not. No, Beasley's not in it. It's no. still, two still and Bamble. Ball out of bounds, isn't it? Or it's going to be a. Uh, New yes, and Morris. Ball out of bounds on that. Uh, let's see what's happening. I've got to pick the ball up now. It's out of bounds. It's Luke. out of bounds on the uh, Footscray half forward line, about 70 metres around from their goal. Well, both sides having a dip here today as Loveridge breaks clear, gets a hurried kick. Back there, it's off the top of the pack. Kennedy couldn't pick it up, neither could Brown. Now Kennedy's got a chance. Out there at half forward, a hand pass back to Wallace. This looks dangerous for Footscray. Smothered. Beautifully smothered. Over it goes now to Judge. Back to Hanley. He's grabbed it'll be holding the ball against him. Well, Hanley's not having a very good day today. Kennedy picks that one up, goes for a pass. He's just about, oh, he saved the day there. That nearly went out of bounds on the full mail and couldn't get there in time. And the umpire will ball, throw it in from that boundary line about 70 metres around 
from the Hawthorne game. Not the most stylish game in the world, but there's plenty of thrills and spills. As Purser gets the knockout, picked up by Judge from Kennedy. Over it goes to Dunstall, coming out to meet Dunstall's Peart. Uh, he gets one in the back, he'll get a free kick for sure. And players call play on, playing the advantage really out there to Hardy, and Hardy takes the mark in front of his opposite number there, Russo, number four. Out there at half back, a short pass, coming in to meet it now as Foster, he's full to the ground. Grabbed by Wallace, back to Hardy again. By Gully, what a game he's playing. Two shrugs, he's a up, it off. Bork, it's oh, around two of them. Great play by Hardy. Back there towards Bandit and Swab. Neither can take the mark. There's pressure on all the time. As Swab kicks the ball back, he's put it out of bounds on the fault. And a chance now for Footscray to go deep into attack. They're in front by nine points. Nine and a half minutes gone of the second quarter. That's great play, Bob. Oh, he's a beautiful player. Great skill, Lou, and... Uh... You can't, there's no substitution for skill. And there's a strong mark taken that time by Ayres out there at half back. The scoreboard is five goals, 636 foot spray to uh, Hawthorne, 43 30, uh, 27 at the six minute mark or 10 minute mark of this uh, second quarter. All foot spray on centre wing. Brian Cordy, well shepherded by Foster. And saw mark number six. And that was a little bit of frustration before because uh, I mentioned in the call that Sewell had let one go. That's schoolboy stuff by Morris. It was, uh, it was Morris that copped it, but lack of discipline by Russell Morris. I don't think Evan Jeans would be too happy with that. Langford. Russo, Russo at centre field, still inside the square. Judge, he's done well since he came on. Judge at half forward, he's a pretty accurate kick as a rule, and he's got that one. A badly needed one for Hawthorne. No umpire waiting for the all clear. Now he's given it. And Kennedy again being spoken to by umpire Glenn James. But it's a Hawthorne goal. Three points the difference at VFL Park, Bob Skilton. Yes, well, excellent defence on that occasion. And Langford now using the ball well. On replay, we see the mark taken by Russo and Judge. Judge had made beautiful position there as uh, Judge now drives it right through the centre and on replay we see a very happy Ken Judge. Ken Judge's first goal for Hawthorne. He came on at the start of the second term. Three points the difference in the preliminary final of 85. Persa thumps it 20 metres downfield. Foster got one too high. The advantage will played. And that no, will be another go. A, he could have been a bit lucky there, Foster, <laughs> I reckon. It's going back to Purser, actually, yeah, for a free kick yeah. at centre field, so Foster had nothing to do with it, Pete. It's like one of your golf shots, Lou. That's right. Purser from centre field. In, in front of Schwab. Bamford had to go to spoil. He did that effectively. Now it's left to Terry Wallace. Wallace's kick is a high one, but he did get uh, boot to ball. Handley has it knocked away, picked up by Loveridge and right half-back think just about Hawthorne's most consistent player, Handley, not having a good day today, fumbles and then slips, still gets his kick in, up towards centre field, bad disposal though, who's he got? Broughton, on behind play again, Pete. Again, well, he's in a couple of those, it's on half-back flank at the moment, the fight, the ball's on Hawthorne's half-forward line, it's Hawkins and Dippy to Benico, Hawkins wins out, gets it back to Hardy, Hardy gets around Langford, you'll get around Kennedy as well, caught, great tackle! Hardy just tried to do too much on that occasion, and it's picked up by Russo. A long kick in towards full forward. Judge just about grabbed it. Knights out of bounds. Boundary throw in. Right half or right forward pocket for Hawthorne. Just over the 12 and a half minute mark of the second quarter. 5 6 36. Switch by to Hawthorne. 5 3 33. And the ball out of bounds. About 30 metres around from the Hawthorne goal. They're trailing by three points. Kennedy against Purser. Purser got the tap down. Picked up by Cordy. The ball driven back there towards centre half. Back coming into meet it now as he goes for a short pass. It's a good one and marked here by Langford. And he'd be about 50 metres out from goal. Hawthorne trailing by three points. Langford doing quite a good job around the ground, Lou. He's been beaten in the ruck work, but doing well around the ground. He's gone for a short pass, trying to find uh, Peter Knights. Ball on the boundary line. It'll be out of bounds. Peter Knights in a bit of trouble. I think he's only had... Uh, Two kicks up to this stage of the match. Watching a few of them slip over like that, Lou, I wonder whether they've chosen the wrong studs. Well, the ground is very slippery. It's a very hot day here today. Knocked out by Purser again. In goes Hardy on the boundary line. He was tripped up. A hand pass comes out to McLean. He fumbles the ball, and the ball over the line and out of bounds again. Now, Peter Donnegan, our man on the ground, said the wind seems to uh, have dropped considerably, Peter. 
So that should help uh, Footscray's cause in this uh, second quarter. Ball knocked out by Purser again. A hand pass coming over to Mailer. Short pass. Oh, oh. a bad one. Deep yet a minute ago. Couldn't pick it up. Down goes Hawkins. He can't get clear. Plenty of scrimmaging going on there. As I said before, not the most stylish game in the world, but it's a pretty tough affair out there. It's a great exhibition by both teams so far. Well, it's uh, guts and determination by both sides. And uh, full marks to Footscray because they were a pushover the last time these two sides bet. But they're putting up a better display today as Russo drives it up there towards Knights. And the Piat knocks the ball away from him and goes through for one point. Excellent defence by Piat there, Lou. So it's still nip and tuck. Five goals, 434 Hawthorne. The Footscray, five goals, 636. Into this quarter, the second by 14 and a half minutes. And there's a mark taken out there by Royal. Short of half back, plus a 15 metre penalty. This brings him right up to the half-back line. He's gone for a short pass. Hawkins getting away from DP at a manic. It takes the ball out there towards the centre wing position. Another pass. It's a good one, and Foster's got it. Now he's on the centre wing position. Boots the ball high over the half-forward line, looking for Jim Edmund. Ayers missed that completely. Edmund and Ayers having a great battle. Down goes Edmund. He's grabbed around the neck. Of a bit of a tussle there, and the umpire will ball it up about uh, 60 metres out from the Footscray goal. 15 minutes gone of the second quarter of the 1985 preliminary final. Five goals, 6.36, Footscray to Hawthorne, 5.434. To bounce. Left half forward for Footscray. Knocked down by Foster, but intercepting for Hawthorne as ears. Back to centre wing, Kennedy and Brian Cordy both overrun the board. Left to Purser, he's gone for a little short one, trying to find Royal, he does so. Gets around Wallace and Deepy Domenico. Short to half forward. That was Beasley. Mark number three. There's no doubt when you give this guy room, he's got a chance, Pete. Well, he's, a he's a typical full forward, Lou, and uh, if he's got the space to come to, and then uh, he does lead well, makes position well, and if you give him the opportunity, there's every chance that in a, a two-out duel, he'll get his share. A goal would give Footscray the lead by nine points. He's kicked one so far and missed one that he should have got. I think he'll miss this one from only 20 metres out. It's a goal. Footscray lead by nine points in the preliminary final. 16 and a quarter minutes gone. Scoreboard at VFL Park. Footscray 6-6-42. Hawthorne 5-4-34. Pete, I think the crowd has built up here considerably today. It's around about the 60,000 mark, I would say. At yes, least. not as many as last week, though, Lou, as we watch that mark again. Good lead by Beasley. Excellent play by Footscray further upfield. Brian Cordy taking the hand pass. And it was a fine performance. Approaching the 17-minute mark, Footscray by nine in the second quarter. Knocked down by Perser. I'm sick of saying that, but he's killing them in the ruck at the, uh, the bounce. But Langford doing a fair job, as Bob mentioned, around the ground. Malin to Foster, and Foster playing well at half forward. Underneath it is Schwab, and takes the mark in front of Sewell. He's gone for the hand pass to Mew. It'll be about Mew's first kick for the afternoon. In front, Brereton Noy flattened Dippy Domenico. Lack of talking there by the Hawthorne players as Kennedy takes the hand pass and Bertie is still flat out in his back. Piet just about caught, but he gets it over to Hardy. Hardy to Wallace. Wallace around Brereton, does he? Has to throw it away. Out to Knights. Knights hooks it back towards half forward. Wallace, great mark. Wallace, though, not the most reliable kick in the Hawthorne side and would be a fair distance out, but a very courageous grab. I think probably a little bit too far out to score, Pete. Yes. One never knows. Bad play on the part of Steve Wallace then. Took too long to get rid of the ball. Wallace has kicked just wide of the 10 metre square. Burton, has he got the mark? He decides to play on and not worry about it and puts it through for a goal to make the difference once again. Three points in the preliminary final. That's Burton's first goal. Footscray 6 6 42, Hawthorne 6 4 40. I always believe that uh, Hawthorne are a far better side when Dermot. Brereton is uh, playing well, and we watch on replay as Brereton and VP at a minute go clash, and there are the two of them. I think they both hurt themselves, but Brereton backing things, and we watch now as Brereton takes it from behind. And as I was saying, I always believe that Hawthorne are a far better side when Brereton is firing, and for that matter, any side is Lou in the centre half forwards firing. Certainly, you're uh, right, Bubba Z picks up the ball now and drives Hawthorne back into attack over their half forward line. The ball hits the deck. Coming into meet of this Kennedy, actually running to his own mate that time, McPherson. Top one for dropping the ball. Had uh, McPherson not been in the way, he could have got clear, but that was unfortunate. It's only three points the difference. 
Now Judge has got a chance to put them in front of Hawthorne. He'd be about 45 metres out. And Judge has already kicked one goal into this quarter by just on 19 minutes. That's the second quarter of the 1985 preliminary final. This has been a pretty tough game. There's the kick by Judge. That's a beautiful kick and it's a goal. So the Hawks have hit the front. It's Hawthorne, seven goals, four, 46. The Footscray, six goals, six, 42. Yes, and uh, an excellent goal by Ken Judge. You can see the concentration. It's a lovely kick. And uh, it does have the aid of the breeze. And even that Peter Donington said that it had dropped a bit. I still believe that Hawthorne are kicking with the aid of about a two-goal breeze in this turn. Just on the 19 and a half minute mark, it's three points the difference now. This time in favour of Hawthorne. Set about, Purser against Langford, knocked out by Langford. Grabbed that time by Hawkins and uh, Footscray go back into attack. Off the top of Bambert's hands, Watts in trouble. Gets a hand pass out, looking for Lovridge. In goes Daniels, but it's picked up by Malin. There's a lead coming out in out of Sewell. Couldn't grab that one and the ball is out of bounds. But don't blame Jim Sewell for that, because he's played a pretty good game here today down there on that forward pocket for Footscray. Been one of their best players. Of course, uh, their full forward, uh, Beasley's already kicked two goals. Certainly a different uh, Footscray side to when these uh, last two sides met. Wallace goes for a hand pass. Coming in to meet it now as Morris taps the ball back to Wallace, but uh, he was grabbed when he didn't have the ball that time, Morris. And take Wallace the got kick. one behind play too. Unusual. So this yeah. is uh, Morris with the ball out there at half back. Three points the difference in favour of Hawthorne. Back into the centre of the ground. The back is Persa. Goes over the top of the pack. Picked up by uh, Foster. Over it goes to Royal. In trouble. That was a bad hand pass, but he couldn't do anything else. Back it comes now to DP at a minute ago. A hurried kick out there towards uh, Brerden. Brerden coming in there with Brian Cordy. Uh, Neil Cordy, I should say, and the ball is over. Now it's still back in play. Picked up by Cordy. He persisted with that one, and he's got it back to DP at a minute ago on a strong mile. Oh, bad hand pass, a shocker, and the ball is out of bounds. Why do they think they have kick. to hand pass? Should have gone back for his kick there, Bertie, DP at a minute ago. He's getting a sponge on the head. I think he needs it to cool him down to get the brain working again. 46 plays, uh, 42. Four points the difference in favour of uh, Hawthorne. Ball back into play again. Langford against Purser. Line ball that time as it comes down to Daniels and DP at Domenico. And once again, the umpire will ball it up on the centre wing position. Just on the 21 and a half minute mark of the second quarter. And it's four points the difference in favour of Hawthorne. There's been nothing in this game from the very word go. It's a real tough battle without being a stylish game. And the umpire's found a free kick. It'll go to Langford for shepherding. That was against Daniels for blocking him. There's no sense in that, is it? No sense at all, Bob. Kick by uh, Langford is over the centre half forward position. Kennedy gets the knock away from Dunstall. Coming in to meet it now is Neil Cordy. Hand pass over to uh, Malin. Juggles it but picks it up the second time. Goes for a pass. Looking for Foster. Got his hands with good and over mark. Grabbed by Daniels. Daniels clear. Looking for a lead. Sends it right across the centre half forward. But no one there. Good strong mark by Russell Green. Trying to get away, but McLean's got him well covered there at centre half back. And Russell Green with the ball. Kicks it out wide. Judge flies over the pack. Falling to the ground now is Russell. They pile on top of him. Don't give him much chance. The umpire still calling play on. And umpire James will ball it up on the point of the square down towards the Hawthorne half forward line. And we're just on the 23 minute mark, and they're in front by four points, the Hawks. 46 players, 42. 22 and three quarter minutes into the second quarter. A bounce inside the centre square. Justin Hawthorne's half forward line. Purser and Langford. One by Purser. Malin sharks it from Wallace but gets caught pretty quickly for his efforts by Dippy Domenico who looks for the free kick but according to the umpire there isn't one. And it'll be a bounce almost in the same position but this time outside the square. Wallace last to get up. A bounce. Langford and Purser, line ball that one. Malin, just about got one at the back, I think, but it's left for Royal to clear it for Footscray. Beautiful turn of speed by the Footscray Rover, up the half forward, Beasley and Mew, just about juggled it, Simon. No mark, and it will once again be a bounce, or perhaps a free kick after the pushing and shoving has subsided. Who's on the bottom? Schwab. Let's watch that again. When we play now, we see Beasley 
And, uh, well, just couldn't quite get on the second grab. It would have been a mark. Knocked down by Persa. Lambert. Out comes Mew. Too high, the tackle, Hawthorne free kick. Perhaps a little bit lucky. Chris Mew to take the free kick in spite of the kickoff line. He's gone to the members' stand side, looking for Langford. Langford likewise goes for a pass, intended for Kennedy. Not a good one, though, because Kennedy was well marked, and it will be a boundary throw-in on Footscray's right half-forward flank, about 70 metres from their goal. Bob. McQueen off, Bahaja on. 46 plays 42 in the second quarter. We're nearly into the time-on period. Daniels has it, but can't get rid of it. And again, we'll see a bounce. Purser again, doing well at the bounces and throw-ins. Foster tries to get the hand pass out, does so. Picked up by Brian Cordy. Edmund takes the mark in front of Gary Ayres. Well, he kicked a beautiful goal in the first quarter. Edmund with a torpedo punt. That one isn't one. Morris flying in front of Beasley. Ball paddled out to Russo. Gets grabbed. Arguably too high for Harger back on the ground. Can he score a goal? Hooks it back in toward the 10 metre square. Two Hawthorne players are there. And a good mark is taken by Mew. Too tall for Bamblet. Good battle down there at the moment between Mew and Beasley. Mew goes for the hand pass. It's taken by Russo in the right back pocket. Russo trying to get around Sue. And by gee, that ground must be slippery. Otherwise, as Bob Skilton suggested, they've got the wrong stops on. Oh, danger here for Hawthorne as Lester Smith finally gets the hand pass out to Wallace. Wallace close to the boundary line, but he picks it up at right halfback. 26 minutes gone, a short pass marked here by Kennedy. Over it goes to Loveridge out there at halfback. He's got a paddock to run, and he hand passes over to Green. There's a chance now for Hawthorne to go deep into attack. He was grabbed, shrugged his opponent off, back to hand. He's had a bad day today. Up there to Dunstall, punched away by Kennedy. It's Dunstall and Kennedy going after. Kennedy's grab didn't have the ball deep yet a minute. I thought it was a free kick. Well, I, I thought, it, a little was, bit I thought it was the other way in the first place, to be honest. Well, it's Kennedy's free kick out there at centre-half back. Goes right across goals. This is dangerous, but Sewell's out, not Sewell. Purse is out there on his own. Four points the difference into the quarter by just over 26 minutes. Now, why was it a, a penalty against Langford? It was Purser that uh, was doing the pushing then. Don't Matthew. ask me, Bob, I'm up here. The Matthew's ball comes over up. to McPherson. McPherson's kick is a long one over the half-forward line. Edmund couldn't hold that mark. He goes down. Backing up well there was Russo. Over to Green. Back there to Kennedy. Over it goes to Langford. Back to DP at Domenico. Goes for a kick, not a good one. It's a shocker and Mark here in defence by Peart. He oh. goes out wide, but his kick wasn't the greatest in the world, but it'll go out of bounds. At least it'll give uh, Footscray an even chance there to keep the ball. It's not hard to, to see that way. Neil Peart is a left footer. That's right. <laughs> ball out of bounds on that uh, half forward line for Hawthorne. Well, they all miss that. It comes back to Royal. Scouts around the pack nicely, boots it back over the centre line. And a great mark taken there by Ears. Well, his two opponents fall over. He breaks clear, goes for a pass. Dunstall couldn't mark that. He fell over. Now Kennedy's got to pick it up. He does the second time. He's clear out there on the wing position, looking for Bahaja, who fumbles the ball. A bad fumble. There's too many against Bahaja. As Green gets the ball back to Wallace, he's grabbed by Bang, but the umpire said too high. Well, Hawthorne had plenty of time to get rid of it, and they could have been a bit lucky. But the free kick was there. I think very lucky, really. He ducked his head. No, I, I personally would have penalised Wallace. Kick out wide now. Punched away by uh, Neil Cordy. Going for the boundary line on Hawthorne's half-forward line. About 70 metres around from their goal. Just on the 28-minute mark. Hawthorne's still going far too short, Lou. They're hand-passing and they're zigzagging instead of going long and direct. It's seven goals, four Hawthorne, 46 to Footscray, 6-6-42. Not oh, Persa missed that one, picked up by Kennedy, a hurried kick by Di Pieta Manico looking for Knights. Couldn't pick that one up and it'll be out of bounds. Out of bounds in the forward pocket position for Hawthorne, about 30 metres around from their goal. There's the siren to win the second quarter, the 1985 preliminary final. Hawthorne, seven goals, 4.46 to Footscray, six goals, six... And by Glenn Jones, starts proceedings in the third quarter of the 1985 preliminary final. A margin of four points only in favour of Hawthorne, but Footscray kicking with the breeze in this quarter. This was the quarter last week that Essendon took Hawthorne apart. Purser and Langford. It's won by Langford from the centre circle. Wallace up to half forward for Hawthorne, but not a long kick. Out comes Peart. 
Ball socket off the ground, picked up by Handley, who's minding Steve Wallace, but he's kicked it straight to Brad Hardy, who shows he can also mark one-handed. Lovely juggle there. He's found Hawkins. Cordy, Neil Cordy out to Daniels, who against North Melbourne got on his own repeatedly, did it there again. Edmund, long kick up. Bam, or should have taken that mark. Put in the back foot. He's got the free kick anyway. Or is it going the other way? Now it's going to swap. It's for length. Finds him. Green. Just gets clear of his opponent. Ball up towards centre wing or centre half forward for Hawthorne. And the mark taken by Brereton. Five marks for the Hawthorne half forward. Played a lot better today, Pete. Yes, he has. He and Jim Sewell, the leading markers on the ground today. Sewell also has five. Brereton. Down towards Hawthorne's uh, full forward pocket, picked up by DP in a minute ago, a snapshot for goal is off target and out of bounds. Boundary throw in in Hawthorne's right forward pocket. Bright sunshine here today, but a number of players have slipped over on the turf. They may have chosen the moulded sole boots. And the ground could be a little bit heavier than we think. McCarthy came on for the third quarter, knocks it down to Russo. His hand pass is not a good one though. Peart. Clears it for Footscray, out towards the half-back line. Lovely tackled mark by Hawkins. Great grab, that one. The hand pass wasn't quite as good. Good block by Judge. DP Domenico, can't get boot to ball. Picked up uh, by Brian Royal. Looking for a hand pass, Royal. Not much there. Malin. And Footscray looking good again. Over to Brian Cordy. Brian Cordy up towards uh, left half-forward flank for Footscray. Schwab should have taken the mark. And Edmund comes out of the pack looking there for Sewell. Covered by Morris. Sewell got his hands but couldn't hold the mark. The ball hits the deck. Sewell won't give in. Tapped out to Bahaja. Tried to get a hand pass out. It misfired. Picked up by Green. And uh, Hawthorne get the ball away from the danger zone. This time through Rodney. A good short pass. And as Bob Skilton said, this young fellow Loveridge is playing a great game today. Out wide with a perfect pass. And the ball marked there by Wallace. Wallace with the ball on the centre wing position. Ball drops short. McCarthy flies. He's got the mark. And of course, he's on the ground replacing Knights. Quickly plays on. Hack fly. Oh, Judge did he mark that? No, the umpire said no oh. mark. No mark at all as the ball is pushed out by Russo, showing a bit of pace, gets the ball back to Loveridge again. And by golly, didn't he show cover some ground to get down there to take the ball in the forward pocket? He's had 15 possessions up to this stage of the match, uh, match and this is the sixth mark. And of course, he's yet to score a goal. Hawthorne in front uh, by four points. This will be a handy goal if the little rover can kick this one. It'll lift Hawthorne no end. There she is on its way. And it's a goal. So it's a 10-point lead for Hawthorne. Eight goals, 452 to Footscray, six goals, 642. There's some good waving by Richard Loveridge, uh, I think, as you called it, Lou. In one minute, he was on the half-back line, putting the ball out towards Terry Wallace. And, uh, well, it was either a mark to Brewitt or Judge. There's no doubt about that one. But it mattered not to Hawthorne, as we see on replay. Russo go on, the left foot... Uh, Kick around the corner as Tony Bahaja comes off the ground. And he's replaced by McLean. Knocked out by Purse and picked up by Mail. And up there to Swab and Bamblett. Neither can take the mark. As a scrimmage here and the umpire will ball it up about 45 metres out from the Footscray goal. They're trailing by 10 points and they badly need a goal here. They can't afford to let uh, Hawthorne slip away. Because once you give uh, Hawthorne a bit of a chance, they certainly grab it. It'll be a ball up. Knocked out by Sewell, spinning out the pack that time as Edmund goes for a hand pass. He's upended the umpire, said, hold the ball. And that was a bit tough because he made all the play length, but goes for a short pass. It's OK, marked by Kennedy. Over it goes to Wes. That's a oh, shocking oh, oh. kick, but it'll come off. Over there it goes to uh, Russ over a bad hand pass. Knocked on by Purser. He goes down, gets it out now. A chance for Cordy to knock the ball over to Hardy. Hardy fumbles. Oh, that's the first fumble he's had all day. As it goes back to Deep Pierre Domenico, a hurried kick back and Brewer has got the mark. And this fellow's looming up as a danger player. He's out there at centre half forward, goes for a pass, looking for Dunstall, but good defensive play on the part of Kenny. Oh, free of kick. I think it might be a free kick against him, but one in the back, or he was holding him back. It was a free kick, there's no doubt about that. But uh, Loveridge was on his own well before. Uh, Berriton put it forward. Berriton should have looked and had a quick look downfield. As we watch on replay now, 
And we see Dunstall coming down. And uh, oh, 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 it's good oh, on his oh. back. Well, the actual play before that was perfect defensive play. Then he wasted the good play, Pete. I mean, Kennedy's extremely lucky that the book's not out. Well, uh, Dunstall not too good. And, of course, Hawthorne, uh, or Footscray, throwing this game away with foolish play, bud. Well, Kennedy I has probably been... wouldn't feel too good if I had seven stop marks in my back. Certainly would. Kennedy has been the main culprit down there in defence for Footscray. He's given away a couple of silly free That's kicks. Right. Uh, one to John Kennedy earlier. Well, that was, uh, uh, picked a good play to give the kick to, though. <laughs> Judge. <laughs> He's normally a pretty good kick at goal, so uh, I think uh, Alan Jeans would be quite happy to have... Uh, Judge kicking at goal, although Jason Dunstall himself is a pretty good kick, and I think he's going to make Dunstall kick it. He is a, a good kick for goal, uh, Jason Dunstall. As you said, Pete, foolish play on the part of Kennedy because uh, it was good defensive play to knock the ball away, it, then he spoiled it. It was good play to knock it clear. He's a good player, Kennedy, but no excuse for that sort of play. Has, they're giving away a couple of silly free kicks. Dunstall for goal number two. A pretty fair angle, but about uh, 25 metres out. He's missed it. One point or out of bounds. I'll wait on the umpires for that. It's one behind. And uh, Dunstall has a sore one as well. 53 to 42. Actually, they're sore tomorrow, Pete. Won't be quite as sore if they win. That's what I was going to say. They're even worse if you lose. Lovely mark to Hawkins. And that should be 15 metres, surely. Umpire speaking to Dippy Domenico. It will be a 15 metre penalty. Well, I think uh, sides are making a bit of a farce of this 15-metre uh, penalty now, aren't they, really? It's got back to what it was. That's right. Hawkins from right half-back flank. Underneath it is, and over the top was uh, Cordy, I think it was. Edmund. Down to half-forward. Morris has it stolen from him by Royal, who's tackled, gets it back to Sewell. Sewell has a right-foot snapshot, Beasley on his own. But the ball sails over his head and through for one point. That means he's kicked now one goal through. 8-5 to 6-7, a difference of 10 points. And we're just over the seven-minute uh, mark of this third quarter of the 1985 preliminary final. Mew runs around his opponent, goes for a short pass. There's a chance now for Swap to pick it up. It's a hurried kick as Persa goes after him. The ball going for the boundary line, and it's out of bounds. Still on Footscray's half-four line, but a heck of a distance around from their goal. Well, Footscray still within striking distance, but they've got to get a goal here now, Bob, to keep themselves going, really. Yes, they certainly do, Lou. They can't afford to let uh, Hawthorne get more than uh, that, uh, say, 17 or 18 points break. There's Wallace with a hand pass out to Purser. Purser's kick is over the half fourth on a chance for Edmund to mark. He fumbled that one. In goes Bandit, having plenty of trouble getting clear. Now the little fella's clear. He looks for a lead. It's not a good kick coming into meter to Sewell. It bounces OK. But he's grabbed the hand pass back to Marlin in plenty of trouble. He's out of the pack. Over it goes now to Royal. Oh, bad hand pass. They're making mistakes now, Footscray. He missed Marlin altogether. A hand pass from Loveridge. Over it goes now to E. Back to Green. At Hawthorne on their own. There were three of them there. He balks Hardy. A hand pass back to Langford. Back it goes to Wallace. And Footscray. Hawthorne going to attack up to their half forward line. The mark dropped by Peart. He butters up again, but he's collared and the umpire will ball it up. About 25 metres out from the uh, Hawthorne goal. I think we see there, you know, some of the advantages of having a player like Deep here to Minico out there. Whether he's getting the ball or not, some of his tackling is great. Certainly is. Knocked out by Purse and then grabbed the ball. A hand pass coming over to Hardy. Spins out of the pack beautifully. A long hand pass out there in the back pocket to Hawkins. He goes for pass. A mark dropped that time by Foster. It was a difficult one, but still gets his kick, but it's a high one. Going for the boundary line, and it bounces in, it bounces the wrong way against length, but this gives Marlon a chance. Did the right thing that time playing it on, but it knocked, he knocked it out of bounds. Well, length had, uh, I think, shown, showed a little bit of inexperience there. He should have tried to mark it. He thought it was going to go out on the full and just casually went across towards it. Well, out of bounds on Footscray's half-forward line, about uh, 80 metres around from their goal. And they badly need one. Now they're trailing by uh, 10 points. Or comes back to Loveridge, still doing a great job as Hawthorne driver. And no doubt the best rover on the ground at this stage of the match, Bob. Well, it's almost a quarter, Lou, and I do agree with you on that one. It's almost a quarter. The 16-minute mark of the second term when Footscray kicked their last goal. Boundary throw it on centre wing. Purser can't find a rover because Loveridge is there. Malin's on the bottom of the stack. Might have got one a little bit too high, but umpire Glenn James says no and comes in quickly to cool tempers again. 
10 points the difference in favour of Hawthorne at the 10 and a half minute mark of the third quarter Langford and Purser won by Purser who hooks it off the ground but hooks it straight to Loveridge Loveridge's kick was a wild one knocked back by Kennedy to Dippy and Domenico which was good play Burton behind goes for the knock on did it work McCarthy yes gets it out to Russo oh, hospital hand pass that one Kennedy back to Russo not the greatest of handballs though great tackle Brad Hardy Hardy slips over every which way Hardy runs out of bounds with the ball well Hardy should have hand passed back to Kennedy they try to do too much and you can't do it in fine well you can't do it any time Bob I know I thought Hardy was quite cool under the uh, circumstances Lou and uh, rather than a hand pass he, he went over the boundary line with it it's very hard to be penalized that way McCarthy and Purser line ball Kennedy now you look for a hand pass, yes he does, Dippy Domenico has to try and get through three of them, puts it out of bounds on the four ball through for a point. That's the former. And at the 11 and a half minute mark, third quarter, it will be a Footscray free kick in their left back pocket to be taken by Peart. Good long kick. Purser goes for the knock on. Handley was ready for it. McCarthy and Peart, it's out of bounds, beating both of those throws, and again it will be a boundary throw-in about 10 metres from the Hawthorne behind post. 10 points the difference in the 1985 preliminary final from VFL Park. McCarthy and Purser, McLean, Neil Cordy, and Mc, uh, paddled out by Purser, picked up by Hardy. Doesn't try and do too much on this occasion and does get the kick in. It's up towards the centre wing position. Ede overruns the ball. Free gets kick. himself tipped up, but there will be a free kick to Footscray as the wrestle goes on. The boss the plate. Seen a few of those today. Umpire indicating that time on is being uh, taken before Foster can take the kick. And Foster has the free at centre half back. 12 and a half minutes got in the term. Foster's kick is a good long one up over the centre line knocked to the ground by Ayers picked up by Bandit tries to get clear caught good tackle Gary Ayers Crowd says holding the ball and the umpire agrees free kick going to the Hawthorne defender that was a good tackle by Ayers a short pass it'll be okay Langford should mark that it's knocked on of course a free kick a squad picks it up the back balks nicely he's got a chance to score here's a long shot at goal Dunstall with Kennedy's got it Dunstall a great mark outmaneuvered uh, Kennedy completely a beautiful mark by Dunstall As he judged that one to perfection he, he may have been a little bit like Beasley at the other end uh, early in the game he may have just put the nudge in the back but not much and the umpire uh, you know construed that it wasn't worth worrying about anyway but an excellent mark by Dunstall and Dunstall going for goal number two this will put Hawthorne in front by 16 points he's successful 13 and a half minutes gone of this uh, third quarter and I think that's the biggest break of the game, isn't it, uh, Bob? It certainly is, Pete, and uh, Hawthorne playing well. They're still against the breeze, and I still think it's about a two-goal breeze, um, but uh, Hawthorne are putting the pressure on uh, Footscray now and not allowing them to get steady and, and dispose of the ball in the manner that they would like. It's Hawthorne that are applying the pressure that Footscray did in the first half. That's right, Bob. Just on the 14-minute mark of this third quarter, 16 points the difference. Funny now. 59 plays 43 in favour of Hawthorne and they're starting to get a grip on this game. It'll be uh, Purser against uh, Langford. Knocked out by Purse. That's a hefty knock. Uh, Lester Smith overruns the ball. He goes back after it again. Gets a hand pass out to McLean. The wrong man. Now McLean's clear. Puts great badly needing a goal. This is a long shot. Is he on target? But a great mark taking defence there by New. So every player on the Hawthorne side now getting a lot more confidence now. They're 16 points in front. Oh, 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 That's a bad oh, kick oh, in. Oh. The ball marked here by McLean. Well, yeah, he'd only be about uh, 30 metres out now. He was looking to pass the ball to somebody. He should have a shot here because they badly need this goal because they're trailing by 16 points. And McLean going for goal number two. There it is on its way. And that is a goal. A ripper. So Footscray bounce back, and that's their first goal score, I think, since about the 16-minute mark of the second quarter. Nine goals, 5.59 Hawthorne to Footscray. Seven goals, 7.49. Two bad mistakes there by Bob. First of all, the hand pass from Lester Smith, and then the kick out by Chris Mew. At least Lester Smith was under pressure. I, I find it unbelievable to think that uh, a player who can kick the ball as far as Chris Mew 
should try and uh, short pass to a player who's got somebody in front of him. We watch again on replay now as Chris New and uh, McLean in front of Gary Ayres and to try and just place it over the top is suicide. Langford to take the free kick for Hawthorne. 15 and a half minutes gone. Pitt, good defence. Wallace can't get boot to ball. In goes Green and Malin. Out comes Loveridge. Loveridge thought about the hand pass. Now he's put it high. Who's he trying to find down there? Eden uh, Daniels wrestling for it. Dunstall with Kennedy. Ball will beat both of those players over the line. And a boundary throw and will result at right half forward flank for Hawthorne. 49 plays 59. A difference of 10 points. Knocked down by Purser. Malin. Just about scored a try there. Looked like it. Identical position. Once again, a boundary throw. 9-5 to 7-7 seven, seven in favour of Hawthorne. The winner to meet Essendon in the VFL Grand Final next week at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Neither McCarthy nor Percy can get it out. It's left to Green. Green's gone for a pass to Judge, and Judge takes the mark. Oh, oh silly play. Oh, that is ridiculous. Steve McPherson, you should be taken off. That oh. is absolutely and utterly ridiculous. It has brought the, the player... Silly play, look. Well, oh. oh, that's giving him a goal. It's handing it on a platter, Pete. Oh, talk about schoolboy stuff. Well, that's a rush of blood for sure. Or well, something wrong with the fella. Ken Judge, directly in front, has put it through for his third goal since coming on at quarter time. And Hawthorne 10 5, 65, Footstray 7 7, 49. It's not to suggest that uh, Judge would not have kicked it uh, even without the 15 metre penalty, but it's, it's one thing for sure. And bringing you 15 metres closer to goal when you're directly in front certainly is a big advantage. And you can see how Ken Judge had relaxed and completely relaxed. I think he would have got the greatest shock of all time. Yeah, that's to, right. To cut what he got. 17 and a half minutes gone, 65 to 49 in the 85 preliminary final. Three goals to Ken Judge. Third quarter action, knocked down by Langford. DP Domenico went through without the ball. ball. And uh, Brian Royal almost got a push in the back. Green, hurried hand pass, picked up by Kennedy. Kennedy's gone for a pass. Dunstall can't take the mark. Kennedy right there with him. Good play by the Footscray defender. Excellent hand pass out to Peart. Well, oh, Peart doesn't know what to do with this one. It's a, uh, well, what do you call that? A grubber. Good bump. Good hip and shoulder, put Langford out of business. Brian Cordy, he's well shifted and gets clear for Footscray. Good play on the part of Cordy. Footscray badly near to go. There'll be a free kick against Wallace. They're doing some foolish stink at this stage of the match, Footscray. Well, frustration here because Hand has got on top of Wallace. There's the ball marked here now by Russell Green out there Green at centre half too. Back. Green looking for a lead, goes right across ground. He's found Swab on his own at, uh, on the other point of the square. Short pass out wide, it'll be okay. I think Kennedy's got a chance to pick this up on the bounce. He does, getting away from his opponent as he sends the ball back with a beautiful pass to McCarthy. Down he goes, it could have been a free kick for a push. Well, it was certainly interference if it wasn't a push, as the umpire indicated. And they're doing some foolish things. They're throwing this game. They're virtually blinded in this third quarter, Footscray. And the chance there was a mistake as the ball comes back here now. Breaking through the pack is Kennedy, a snap at goal, but he's off target and it's through for one point. But it doesn't worry Hawthorne. He was there for a long while, Lou, and uh, it was a poor piece of disposal by McCarthy. And no, McCarthy wouldn't need to be told, I know that, but uh, Ede was sitting there waiting. 66 plays, 49, 17 points the difference. Short pass, a little kick by Hardy down there in the back pocket. Chance for Hawkins at the back, takes the mark. He might have given D.P. a minute ago a little bit of a push. A long hand pass coming over to McPherson. Had made that fatal mistake before. Another pass looking for Sewell. Got under that one. Oh, taken off the puck beautifully by uh, Edmund. A snap at goal. Will it make it up there towards Mew and uh, Beasley? Having a great wrestle here. Neither can get clear. Is it a free kick to Beasley? The umpire said no. A swab and Hawthorne take the ball away from the danger zone. Good play. There's a chance now. For the ball to be picked up by Daniels Footscray going back into attack a pass and Sewell's got it. He topped the heavy one from Morris that time, but no 15 metre penalty and rightly so. Now Sewell would be about 35 to 40 metres out, and they're trailing by 17 points. Seven marks to Jim Sewell, and he's played a very good game down there in the forward pocket. He's kicked one goal. There she is on its way. Will it come around enough? It does. It won't make the distance, or is it a goal? Let's see on the result. 
It's a goal. So Footscray still in there with a chance. And you've got to admire they've made a lot of mistakes in this quarter, Bob, but they're still fighting it out. Yes, they certainly are, Lou, and uh, I think uh, there may have been a report uh, while things were going on down there. I'm not sure. But uh, I do feel that uh, Swab may re be reported as uh, we see the replay of the kick just over the line. Goal umpire in good position to see. But for what reason, I don't know. But I think you might find that Swab of Hawthorne might be reported. 11 points the difference. We approach the 21-minute mark of this third quarter of the 1985 preliminary final. And Footscray still there with a chance. Set a bounce again. Well, that's if the umpire ever get the ball. I don't know where it's gone to. A new ball coming out, Lou. New ball coming out. Whether that helps Footscray or not, but they have just about blown this game with those foolish mistakes down there, Bob, and that particularly uh, the players like Judds and uh, Dunstall. We took it, uh, we don't forget that Hawthorne have made a couple of uh, bad mistakes too. And Pete Paul before the hand pass by Lester Smith for one, and then the kick by New. 21 and a half minutes gone. 11 points that if was knocked out by length, but again by Hawkins. They all missed that one. DP Domenico gets it down there towards uh, McCarthy's kick is smothered by Hardy, a good one. And it's Wallace driving them back into attack. Brereton comes out with the ball to get the ball. It's Kennedy and Brereton, but uh, Kennedy takes it over the line and out of bounds. Played it safe, and there'll be a throw on about 30 metres around uh, from the Hawthorne goal, and they're 11 points in front. 22 minutes got in the third quarter. Boundary throw in right forward pocket for Hawthorne, 55 to 66. <laughs> in front, Kennedy. Purser cannons into him. And you don't have to be uh, Einstein to work out that that's a free kick. Well, I think Kennedy might have balked him there. Kennedy has kicked two goals. I reckon, he, right, I reckon he was pretty stiff to get the free kick against him, Purse. I reckon he balked him. That's, a, that's an infringement. The thing is whether Purse was looking at the ball or not, and I uh, think he may have been. Kennedy about 45 or 40 metres out from goal. Sprays that one a bit out of bounds, I think. Yep. And so the Footscray supporters say, well, that's all it deserved anyway. And Brad Hardy will take the free kick. A player who covers more ground than Burke and Wills. Needs to be everywhere, doesn't he? That one drops a little bit short. Knocked away by Ede. May have been grabbed. I don't think he had the ball. I don't think he did either. Umpire didn't uh, see it. And it will be a bounce almost in Hawthorne's right forward pocket. That's a little bit further out than that. Purser with Langford. Purser wins that one over the top down to Neil Cordy. Left puts it up towards the half back line. Foster and Lester Smith. Foster going through like a steam train here. Strong play. Up the centre wing, knocked down by Ayres. Edmund looking for a free kick. He'll get one. And it might be a 15 metre penalty. No, says the umpire. And Jimmy Edmund to take the free kick on left centre wing. Footscray skipper wobbles the punt kick up the half forward. Oh, Royal, yes. Chipped in beautifully in front of Ayres. Out to Hawkins on his own. Dippy Domenico a long way from his opponent. Hawkins trying to play on. Trying to creep over the mark, get a little closer, Pete, I reckon. Oh, well, good play. <laughs> He's well within kicking distance <laughs> and directly in front of goal. And the goal here would uh, make the difference five points. Poor defence by Hawthorne on that occasion. So, Footscray not, not being... Now, if he Tonight, takes too long to kick this, he'll mess it up. You've got to go back when you're hot. Well, he's directly in front, let's say that, and only about, uh, well, 30 metres out. No reason he shouldn't kick it, and he has. The goal umpire doesn't move. So Hawkins puts through his first goal for Footscray. They've kicked the last two now, and once again starting to look pretty good, but Hawthorne still lead by five points, 66 to 61. And that's excellent play there as... Uh... Hawkins who reads the game so well and uh, Brian Royal it was the the, the defence against Royal in the first place that wasn't good by Hawthorne and uh, Royal went on and a beautiful pass out to Hawkins five points the difference as we approach the time on period of the third quarter in the 85 preliminary final Wallace for Hawthorne can't get clear and again Hawkins who it's... plays on the wing but goes in to take the bounce it will be a bounce, though. Still inside the square at the 25-minute mark of the term. 
Bob, as I said before, it hasn't been the most stylish game in the world, but it's a typical final match. It's been on for young and old right through. A lot of pressure put on by both sides. Yes, a lot of the uh, lack of finesse has been by desperation and good tackling by the opposition side. Just over the 25-minute mark, five points the difference in favour of Hawthorne. Puts Gray still within striking distance. A fumble goes on between McQueen that time. Couldn't pick it up. Wallace trying to get out of the pack, but the umpire said play on. It's little Lovebridge there with persistence. Over it goes to Hardy. Hardy's grab. Oh, great play. Brilliant play. He better kick it. He's clear now. A hand pass coming over now to uh, Royal. Royal with another long hand pass over to Edmund. This could be a goal. A long shot it is. And Footstool at the front. Oh, brilliant play on the part of Hardy. He lost it. He got it. And he cleared with a beautiful hand pass. And that is what they call final football, Bob. Yeah, that was man for football by Hardy. And he... Uh cared not about what was going on and on replay now we see Hardy take possession just burst the tackle and really accelerate great pass another tackle a lovely hand pass to Royal a hand pass over the top and we find the Footscray skipper putting to his second goal and Footscray in front by one point 26 points, uh, 26 minutes gone, a point the difference, a scramble at centre field. It's young on for young and old as McCarthy drives uh, Hawthorne back into attack. Kennedy couldn't take the mark, no, it's third, I should say, fumble that one. Back it goes now, a smother this time by uh, Neil Cordy over to Fiat. And Footscray get the ball out wide towards the boundary line, it'll be out of no, it bounced back. A chance now for uh, E to pick it up there on the wing position. A short pass. Oh, and a bad oh, one. Oh. Mark Tian out by oh. Purser. Oh, Purser's kick is smothered. A chance now again for Footscray's Russo to pick it up. He's grabbed a quick hand pass. Going through was caught. He knocks the ball over to Piat. Out it goes wide. And boy, is this a football game now. It's picked up by D. Piat a minute ago. He went without the ball. He's got a chance to recover. A long hand pass to Judge runs into Kennedy. He loses it. Back it goes again. They're falling over like nine pins. Out the judge. A chance to step at the goals. Into the goal square it goes. And it's through for one point and scores a dead level. 27 and a half minutes gone. Of this third quarter of the 1985 preliminary final. 67 points each. Neil Peart. We are taking plenty of time. All Fitzgerald players covered across the half back line. Brad Hardy in the pocket, telling him where to kick it because I don't think uh, Fiat had too many clues. But he finds McLean right on the boundary line, flings it back to Hawkins, back to McLean. McLean keeps going because he's shepherded by Wallace. So Footscray take it from full back up to half forward, but uh, bad luck for them there because it's out of bounds on the full, and it will be a Hawthorne free kick. Lester Smith scores level. Now it's going to. Uh, Go right down to the wire. This one in the final term is at the back. Brereton in front. McCarthy picked up by Kennedy. Thought about giving it to Wallace. Bad hand pass. Handley. Can he get clear? Great tackle, Steve Wallace. Van Little caught. Good tackle by Lester Smith. And it'll go against Foster. And Lester Smith will take the free kick at half back. Some good tackling by uh, teams of both sides today. Hasn't been a pretty game to watch. Judge chipping in to take the mark. Royal seemed to have his name on that. Judge on right centre wing. Must be pretty close to siren time to end the third quarter. Russo to Kennedy. Oh! That was uh, Brian Cordy has flattened a Hawthorne player behind play. It is uh, Wadley gets up. McCarthy. Out to the centre wing. Edmund and Ayers. Edmund again. Grab, clear, grabbed again. All that. Oh, oh. oh, I don't know about that, Bob. Play on for mine. I don't think any of the players deserve to be penalised. No, they're both making the ball their objective. Big pack of players. Broughton, almost a screamer. In fact, the umpire has played it, and he comes reeling out. 15 metres, it might be. No. I don't reckon he hung, uh, held onto it long enough, really. Let's watch it again. Brereton has the kick, no 15 metres. It's a towering punt kick, it won't be a score. Peered in front, out of bounds. So a boundary throw in. Left forward pocket for Hawthorne. 
temper's becoming a little bit frayed, maybe confused. Here's the McCarthy incident here. Oh, got him. <laughs> that one from our spy camera behind as Brewerton has a shot at goal. Might put Hawthorne in front because it could be a behind. It is. And so Hawthorne lead by one point. Brewerton has kicked 1-4. Uh, 1-4, one four. One four. 68 plays, 67, 30 and a half minutes gone. Brad Hardy just about the matter of the match to bring the ball back. Quite the difference as the ball goes out there towards that half back line. Deep here to Manico and Hawkins having a great battle. It'll be a free kick to Hawkins. And the crowd going mad here as that free kick is awarded to Hawkins. Only a point the difference. And we're pretty close to three-quarter time. I reckon about a minute to go. Short pass and the ball marked out there by Marlin on the centre wing position on the outer side of the ground. 68 plays, 67 in favour of Hawthorne. 31 minutes gone of this third quarter. The pack fly, no one can take the mark. Picked up by Steve McPherson. Footscray get the ball back there to Foster. Oh, he could have marked that. Tapped it down. Foley's play. This allowed Lester Smith to pick it up. By golly, if they're trying to lose this game, they're doing their best. Footscray up it goes to Hardy. And as Pete said, the man of the match so far, played a great game. He's had 17 possessions, but the way he's gone about the game. Ah, oh, great mark to Lester Smith. I think now's the time I'd bring Matthews on, Lou, and uh, and really throw the challenge to Matthews of, of playing on Hardy. That's the sound to win the uh, third quarter. It's a point the difference. Ten goals, 8-68 Hawthorne, a foot grade, 10-7, 65. Preliminary final at VFL Park. Hawthorne leading by only one point. The winner to tackle Essendon in the 85 Grand Final next Saturday at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. DP to Benico gets the hit out from that bounce up towards left half forward for Hawthorne. Matthews in first, shooting out the hand pass to Brereton. Brereton caught, did he have the ball, did he drop it? <laughs> Judging by the crowd reaction, it's a Footscray free kick. I reckon he was pretty tough on Brereton there. So Foster takes the free. Foster now at centre half back, Grunnell Wigan centre half forward. Kicks into the man on the mark on centre wing position, Daniel Zanid, Lester Smith grabbed, did he have the ball? No, says the umpire. Play on, Eid, Langford, Lester Smith, Green, back to Handley, Handley at the edge of the square, short pass, not a good one, Good, uh, not good disposal. Now it's Pierce's turn to slip over in the left uh, or right back pocket for Footscray and it will be a boundary throw in. One minute gone in the final quarter. No further addition to the score. It's in Hawthorne's forward pocket. McCarthy. Oh, hits it straight down to Matthews. Great ruck play. Touch one behind. Hawthorne by two points. Good ruck play, but unfortunately for Hawthorne, Matthews' kick was touched off the boot. And so only one point resulting, even though it, uh, well, it would have been a goal, wouldn't it? Certainly would have been. Kennedy brings the ball back into play to Hardy. Once again, showing Matthews his backside. Out to Peart. Hawkins. Steve McPherson. Steve McPherson on centre wing. Puts Footscray deep into attack. Gronowegan on his own. Puts it high up towards half forward. Beasley, great mark. And well within kicking distance. And he should be able to put Footscray in front. And they will bring the stadium roof down when he kicks it. If, in fact, it's a goal. It started right at the other end of the ground, Pete, and uh, there's no excuse whatsoever to allow Hardy to be in position to take that short kickoff. To start with a two-minute mark, and uh, Beasley with a chance to kick goal number three and to put the Bulldogs in front by four points. The strain on Beasley, the full forward for uh, Footscray as he comes in from this kick about uh, 35 metres out directly in front. Taking plenty of time. There she is on its way. And uh, let's see the result. It's a goal. Footscray have kicked the last four goals in this match. And Footscray and front and the Footscray supporters going berserk here. Ten goals, 9.69 Hawthorne. The Footscray, 11 goals, 7.73. Just on the three-minute mark of this last quarter of the 1985 preliminary final. And on replay, we watched the mark again. And uh, we said a couple of weeks ago, Lou, even against Chris Mew, if you allow them to be a two-out duel, then there's every chance that Beasley will get his share. Just over the three-minute mark of the last quarter, Footscray in front by four points. 
Knocked out by Purser. They all missed that one. It comes back here now to uh, Green. A hurried kick over the uh, half forward line. Coming out to meet it now is Judds. He goes down, taps it over beautifully to Kennedy. Hawthorne bounced back up there towards the full forward position. A great mark down there by um, McCarthy. McCarthy's got it. He got a chance to put Hawthorne back in front. And the way these uh, two sides have played today, you can't write them off until the final bell here for the 1985 preliminary final. He's only about uh, five metres out, but a pretty difficult angle. I should imagine he'll run around. That's what he's doing. Straightens up, fires. A goal, and the Hawks are back in front. That's McCarthy's first. Just on the four-minute mark of this last quarter, it's 11 goals, 9.75, Hawthorne. The Footscray, 11 goals, 7.73. You can't answer them, answer them much quicker than that as McLean gets an awkward bounce. And good play by a judge. Uh, might almost have been construed a throw, but I, I don't think under pressure you ever uh, uh, penalise uh, pieces of play like that. It was a great piece of play by a judge to set up the goal. Hawthorne's first goal since the 17-minute mark of the third quarter. Hawthorne lead by two points. Purser can't get it clear. Royal had it and then lost it play on decision from the umpire I think a good one Ronald Wigan another awkward looking punt kick Gary Ayers fine mark in front of Edmund that's a play on call Ayers in trouble Ronald Wigan again Mew Morris free kick going Hawthorne's way penalise aside it did indeed official attendance this afternoon 55,246 Chris Mew from full back long kick one of the longest kicks in the side and of course he made a bad blue earlier in the game in the third quarter a short kick resulted in a foot spray goal Eid Matthews answering the challenge perhaps as Bob Skilton suggested at three quarter time the Hawthorne skipper goes for a short pass Dunster leads out and pops another one he's uh, about 40 metres out let's watch it again ooh So Dunstall, fair way from goal, but well within kicking distance. He's kicked two. That looks pretty good. Banana Bender, usually accurate at goal, and that one no exception. Dunstall putting through his third, and Hawthorne get two quick ones on the board. 12-9-81 to 11-7-73. That's a lovely pass by Lee Matthews, and uh, as we suggested at three-quarter time, um, it was an ideal time to give Matthews the challenge and so far he's responded and we watch from the other angle as Dunstall takes that mark just past the six minute mark of the final term 81 to 73 in favour of Hawthorne once again Footscray out of the centre down to Royal knocked away by Gary Ayres back to centre wing picked up by Russell Green and Hawthorne looking good now as Green gives a hand pass over there to Wallace goes for a short pass it'll be a good one there's Matthews and Bob Skilton suggested this at three quarter time this was the time to bring him on the ground but he is doing it the right way, Lou. He's running around and he's playing an attacking game. He's not just standing in the forward pocket and waiting for the ball to come to him. Well, Alan Jeeves must have heard you talking here at three-quarter time. And your summary, Bob, as we see D. Pieta Manico with the ball out there on the forward pocket position, about 40 metres out from goal, just on the seven-minute mark. And the difference, eight points. He kicks this one. It'll give Hawthorne a good chance of going into the grand final. Doesn't uh, quite get uh, on target and it's forced through for one point. But at least it's in uh, Hawthorne's attacking zone and then on points in front. 12 10 82 to 11 7 73. Running on Hardy to bring the ball back into play. Umpire calling him back. Goal umpires haven't finished. Uh, Going to call him back again for the third time. Let's hope this is lucky. Now he's clear. Short pass and Hawkins has got the ball down there in the back pocket. I don't think he's in any better off than Hardy was. You never understand that short pass to the back pocket. Not if they've got to go back and have a kick. Chance for Wallace has been a very quiet player today. Fumble that one. It's a hand pass out looking there for uh, McPherson who's gone out of the game completely since the first quarter and the ball is out of bounds. Of course, Steve McPherson started like uh, nobody's business in that first quarter. He's only had, I think, four kicks since that first quarter. 82 plays 73, just on the eight-minute mark of the last quarter. In favour of Hawthorne, they've got a big chance of going into the grand final and Footscray badly needing a goal here. Sewell has gone to defence, Peart to the forward line. 
see what happens. A ball up out there on that half forward flank on in Hawthorne's attacking zone. Knocked out by Langford. He's battled uh, hard all day today. We see Cordy go after the ball. He gets a hand pass back. It's a bad one. He was under plenty of pressure then, and the ball is out of bounds. A little closer to Hawthorne's goal, about 60 metres around from there. Boundary throw in. Hawthorne's right half forward flank. At the moment, they have been pleasant spring sunshine here at BFL Park. High tackle going uh, Hawthorne, no, going Footscray's way. Hawkins, the recipient of the free kick. Had an excellent game last week and has been a fine contributor to the Footscray cause this afternoon again. Lester Smith gets it down to Russo. Russo from right centre wing. Paul Hawthorne goes long. Now he's got four down there. None can take it. Good tackle, Brereton. Or oh, fumbled out there by Foster. Or paddled out to Hardy. The door doesn't get the favourable bounce. McLean tries some shepherding. That wasn't good play, though. No one there. Picked up by Gippy to Benico. Short pass. Matthews on the boundary line. Matthews. Oh, he's in trouble. Not as fast as he was. Could have had a shot there, Matthews. Thought about looking for uh, somebody in a better position and then got caught out. I don't think you can be critical when a player gets caught like that, though, because he was looking for a player in a better position. He was right on the boundary line. McCarthy and Purser. Now he's got another chance, Matthews. He'll have a shot this time, I'm certain. And he's put it through, I think, for a goal. So Matthews very quickly making amends. And the Hawthorne skipper in everything in the final quarter so far, 13-10-88 uh, to 11-7-73. Well, he's been the match winner, and Bob's, Bob Skilton did suggest this at three-quarter time. They should bring him on the ground, and he's been in everything since the start of this uh, last quarter, Matthew. Well, he's really accepted the challenge, Lou, and... Uh, He's gone right on with the business, and uh, now he would have Brad Hardy thinking, what will I do, rather than the boot being on the other foot? Six possessions to Matthews in the final term. Hawthorne by 15 points. 15 points the difference over the 10-minute mark. Footscrave got to get a goal to be in this game and go in the grand final, but everything's shaping up for Hawthorne at this particular stage of the last quarter. It'll be a ball up at centre field. Plenty of time left yet, Luke. Well, there's plenty of time, but I'd like to be in Hawthorne's position. They're playing with a lot more confidence. Uh, Matthews has lifted them no end down there at the full forward position or in the forward pocket. Umpire's found a free kick. It'll go to Hawkins. He was grabbed too high. Let's see what they can get a goal. He's over the centre line towards their centre half back position. Goes out wide, but not making much distance. It's Daniels taking the mark. He's been a pretty quiet player today. Decides to go for a bit of a run. Wallace is after him. Let's see what he does with the kick up there towards uh, Mew and Beasley with the back. Well played by Mew. Uh, Shepard and Beasley off the lamp, uh, swap to take the mark. Right across goals. It'll be safe. Grabbed by E. Over to Morris. And Hawthorne now playing with a lot of confidence. Morris showing a lot of dash. Goes for a hand pass. It's a good one. Grabbed by Russo. He scoots around to Daniels. He's out there at half back. It's a long kick over the half forward line to Matthews and Hardy. Hardy actually pushed Matthews in the back that time. But the umpire will ball it up. Out there on that half forward line for uh, Hawthorne, about uh, 60 metres out from their goal. They're in front by 15 points. 88 plays, 73. Just over the 11 and a half minute mark of this last quarter. Sewell against McCarthy. Knocked out by Sewell. Intercepted that time by Brewer. And another stack up here. And the umpire will ball it up again. Still about 60 metres out from the Hawthorne goal. Well, there hasn't been many big breaks here today, and this 15 points will certainly be handy for Hawthorne. It's about the biggest, isn't it, Luke? Yes, it is. Knocked out again. Picked up by Judge. Has already kicked three goals. A long shot looking for Dunstall at the back. He's got the set. The knee mark that one goes after again. He's got a chance to get a hand pass back to Matthews. Coming here to pick it up as Kennedy. It's not a goal. Oh, and Hardy grabs it right on the line. Has Hardy got his hands full now? Putting up with Matthews. Matthews going in after him. Point to point. It's a point, is it? He must have played on, did he? He might have played on, and the umpire's allowed to touch off the boot. Touched off the boot. No 10 yards at Mayo Field. Waiting now, it's uh, 16 points, 89 plays, 73, still in favour of Hawthorne. Over the 12 and a half minute mark of this last quarter. Oh, there's a good mark now to DP at a minute ago. They're all starting to come into the game now, Hawthorne. Oh, Academy Award. Well, he's a bit of an actor. Birdie looking for 50. I don't penalty. think he'd call him a dramatic actor. He'd be more on the uh, light comedy style, wouldn't he? Even though Hawkins has been a fine player, DP at a minute ago has not let Hawthorne down. He's tackling. Uh, he's in there putting pressure on all of the time. 
Waiting on DP at a minute. Yeah, that's a long kick towards the goals. Into the goal square. The players set themselves. It's pushed through. No, it's not pushed through now. It is pushed through for one point. And the difference, 17 points. And the game gradually falling into Hawthorne's hands. Brad Hardy having plenty of kicking practice here in the last few minutes. This time he's going to favour the member stand side. He's looking for Malin. He's got him. Malin looking for a 15-metre penalty, but decides to play on straight away. That might have been touched off the boot. We'll wait and see. McPherson couldn't take the grab anyway. Wallace looks for a hand pass. Dispossessed quickly. Daniels gets his kick in short. Lester Smith down to ears. No, not there. Handley off the ground. A little bit of luck going Hawthorne's way there as it goes out to Wallace. At the back, Dunstall. Knocked down by Sewell. Matthews again. Position number seven in the final quarter is another goal. It's killed on Matthews. Two goals to Matthews in this final term. 14-12, 96 to 11-7-73. Lethal Lee has slaughtered him in this last quarter. The oldest man on the ground. And what a game he's played, Bob. Well, he's had a rest. And uh, when you say to a player like Matthews, sit on the bench and... Uh, you throw him back on the ground, you, you've got not just a, a player with a little bit more life in his legs, but a player with devil in his heart. Two goals to Matthews, as I mentioned, both of them kicked in this final term. Hawthorne by 23 points. Knocked down by Langford. No one getting it out of the centre. The scrimmage developing there, and the umpire has found a free kick. It's going Footscray's way to be taken by Steve Wallace. Wallace short of the centre circle. Up to half forward, Schwab and Bamblett. Bamblett got to it first. Hooks it down towards the centre half forward position. Lester Smith racing forward for Hawthorne. Taps the ball further forward for Footscray. Morris will try and get the ball close to, or in fact, over the boundary line. He does that successfully, and it will be a boundary throw it in Footscray's right forward pocket. Bob, I don't think there's a better saying that applies to Lee Matthews. Once a champ, always a champ, isn't it? I concur completely with that, Luke. Ball back into play again. Beasley goes the punch, it's OK, the red man a snap and goal, but a shocking uh, kick. Very lackadaisical as he pounces on New. A chance for McLean, he was actually grabbed by the leg. And I think the umpire will play the free kick. So Footscray, oh, he's gone for a short pass, what's he done with it? And Bahajar's got it on a better angle, only about 15 to 20 metres out from goal. Footscray are trailing by 23 points. 17 when he kicks this. And, of course, we're just on the 16-minute mark of this last quarter of the preliminary final for 1985. Now, if they're going to have a chance, he's got to kick this goal, the little budgie. There's the kick on its way. And that's a goal. So, Footscray haven't given up hope yet The score. Is uh, Hawthorne 14, 12, 96 to Footscray, 12 goals, 7, 79. Yes, and uh, Tony Bahaja quite happy. Has uh, been fairly quiet today, spent most of the day on the interchange bench. And uh, Chris Mew, another player to slip at the vital moment and really cause that goal. 16 and a half minutes gone of the last quarter, 17 points to lift. A chance for Footscray to go deep into attack, kicked down by Purse, a chance for Edmund. He goes on a mark. Yes, he's paying it. He quickly plays on, looking down there for Beasley. It's falling short. It bounces the wrong way for the Footscray uh, forward. Picked up by Daniels. He's grabbed. He goes after it again. It'll be a free kick. And he's well within kicking distance. He'd be about uh, 35 metres out, and he's yet to score a goal. Very poor tackle, that. 17 points the difference. And if he kicks this, we've got another ball game on our hands. We've had it like this all day. Let's see what Daniels can do, it, uh, do with this one. Oh, is it coming around? It won't reach the distance. Oh, there we might see a free kick and infringement there to Beasley. He copped one as he went for the mark. Out it comes again to Daniels. Now he's got another chance. So opportunity knocks twice. Bad defence there by Hawthorne. Bob, wouldn't it have been better to rush it through for a behind? Well, it's probably easy to say that afterwards, uh, Pete, but uh, I think he maybe should have just run on a bit further. There's the kick. That's one point. So at 16 points at the seven and a half minute mark, 96 plays 80 in favour of Hawthorne of the last quarter. So there's still plenty of time for Footscray to win this match if they're good enough. Hawthorne looking a little tired at the moment, uh, Lou. Ball kicked out now to Lester Smith, left unattended that time. A hand pass coming over to Swab, it bounces OK, gets a hurried kick, it's not a good one, back to Brereton and Foster, they both miss it. Down goes Judge, gets a hand pass to Wallace, he was grabbed around the neck just about. It'll be holding the man the second time. 
though Wallace has got a oh, toe on the ball against him. Well, that surprised me. A short pass, and the ball marked here now by Royal out there at half forward. So Footscray haven't given up yet. Short pass. And once again, we see the ball marked here by Kennedy. Not wasting any time. Looking for Beasley. And Mew having a great battle down there. Neither can take the mark. Going into an open goal is Porter. Oh, golly, it's only 10 points. But in the first half, the Footscray in the game here. Ten and a half minutes gone. 14 12. 96 Hawthorne for Footscray coming back from the depths of despair. 13 8 86. Malin coming, Malin coming off. Cordy on, Loveridge on, Russo off is on replay. We see the wrestle between full back and full forward. Perth of the big Ruckman playing on down the ground, putting it through for full points. 19 minutes gone in the final term. Footscray coming right on with the business now. Bob Skilton said they were tired. Hawthorne, are they? If they are, Footscray will win. Langford to Dippy Domenico. Kick only travels about five metres out towards centre wing. Loveridge back on. He's fresh. Or fresher, perhaps, down towards left half forward. Plenty of footscray players are there. Brian Cordy and Matthews out of bounds, I think. Barney decides to play on, but it is out of bounds, so bad luck for Hawthorne. Hardy's been taken off, Matthews. Brian Cordy has the job. And uh, Matthews uh, perhaps suggesting that the boundary umpire was too far behind play to see it. I think it was out there, Pete. Yes, I agree with you, Bob. McCarthy and Purser knocked down to Sewell. Eid and Neil Cordy. Loveridge. <laughs> Free kick going Foster's way. Plays on. Footscray finishing plenty of running at the moment. Big Ron O'Regan is there. Knocked away by Lester Smith and Bamford, actually. No talking there by Footscray. In goes Ron O'Regan again. Ball paddled out to Royal. Fresh air shot. Kennedy tackled well by Neil Cordy. Umpire Glenn James decides it's a stalemate. And it will be a bounce on centre wing. About nine minutes to go, Pete. And I reckon Footscray are looking a little bit fresher at the moment, Bob. But uh, I wouldn't like to say they're going to win it. Well, nine minutes, you can probably score about five or six goals. So plenty of chances uh, still there for both sides to sew it up. And plenty of fumbling. The ball bouncing awkwardly for both teams. It's picked up by Wallace for Hawthorne. He's looking for Dippy Domenico. Couldn't find him. Oops, a daisy. Hardy tackled well. Out comes Matthews. Good handball. Kennedy, no one to give it to. Now goes long. Up to Ede. Shepherded well by Wallace. In towards the goal square. Kennedy and done so! Yeah, so I might be wrong, but I, I don't think that Kennedy tried to punch the ball away there. No, I he think did he, not. I think well, he went for the mark more than anything. And uh, on replay now, we watch closely as Kennedy was... Uh, I think trying to judge it to take the mark and didn't try and punch the ball away. He's kicked three goals, Jason Dunstall. If he kicks this one, it'll be the most important one he's uh, put through for the day. He's got it, I think. I'll have to wait in the goal umpire, though. It's a goal. And Dunstall putting through his fourth goal for Hawthorne. Hawthorne 15 12, 102, Footscray 13 8, 86. Once again, Matthews hits the middle on that goal, Bob. Yes, Lou, and uh, you, you still have to admire the way that Footscray have kept at it and at it and at it, and uh, there's been no lack of endeavour. In fact, if anything, it's been their, their endeavour that's got them into a little bit of bother because they've tried to get the ball down too quickly at times rather than having a look and putting it to a player in the right position. 16 points in favour of Hawthorne as we approach the 22-minute mark of the last quarter. At the bounce, it's Langford and Purser. Picked up by Daniels. Daniels has kicked us down to the half-forward line. Schwab racing forward for Hawthorne, but his teammate Morris beats him to it. Morris's kick is back to the centre wing position. Loose ball. It's up for grabs. Who's going to get it? Cordy tackled well by Ede. It's out of bounds. And a boundary throw-in will be the end result adjacent to the interchange area. Just over the 22 and a half minute mark of this last quarter. 16 points the difference in favour of Hawthorne. Time running out for the Bulldogs. Well, they both missed that. Blankford and uh, Purse of the ball kicked wild out towards the boundary line, up towards Hawthorne's half-forward line by Loveridge. And, of course, the ball out of, out of bounds. It's about 65 metres around from the Hawthorne goal. There's no doubt, as Bob Skilton suggested, at uh, three-quarter time, Matthews should come on the ground. He has, and he's made the difference to uh, Hawthorne. He's played a marvellous last quarter. The ball picked up that time by Hardy. Back it goes now towards uh, Neil Cordy, but he couldn't scoop it up in time. That's out of bounds. Still on that half-forward line for Hawthorne, and that's what they want. It'll suit them fine as time is running out on the 23-minute mark of this last quarter. So I reckon it's about seven minutes to go at the most. 
bit of fumbling going on by both sides and the umpire will ball it up but this is where Hawthorne wanted down there on their in their attacking zone which great supporters pretty quiet now it'll be Langford and the person comes down to Hawkins good play as he gets out of the pack but the hand pass wasn't too good down goes McCarthy they soon pounce on him but there's no progress made uh, there by Hawkins, oh he's found a free kick he might have copped it a bit high there's a hand pass coming out for Kennedy a long kick over the center of the ground Swab and uh, Bamford go for that one neither take the mark it's Bamford spinning out of the pack beautifully he's gone for a pass but well intercepted that time by Russo the ball back to McCarthy it's too long coming out to meet it now Oh, Cyril went the wrong way. Dunster with a hand pass back to Kennedy. A snap at goal. This could be the clincher. Now it's through for one point. So it's 17 points the difference. And we're just over the 24-minute mark of this last quarter. 15-13, 103. Uh, Hawthorne to Footscray. 13-8, 86. Waiting there for the ball to come back into play. Hawkins having a battle out there. Is that a mark? No, the umpire called play. I'm picked up by McPherson. A hand pass over to Kennedy. Um, uh, Brian Gordy. The ball drops short and coming into smother at that time was Swab. Out the ball is uh, Bandit. A hand pass over to Daniels out there at half forward. He's got no one to give it to. Now he's found McLean. McLean with a long hand pass. A shocker, but picked up now by Bahaja. Over it goes. A snap at goal by Neil Cordy, but he's off target. That's true for one point. So at 16 points, the difference, we approach the 25-minute mark. 103 plays, 87 in favour of the Hawks. Two goals, four in favour of Hawthorne. Chris Mew, he's got his hands full with Simon Beasley this afternoon. Towering punt kick, he's a bit nervous about going for the short ones. And look at that, he's just about put it up in the centre circle. So that probably answers all questions in that regard. Little McLean, I think it was, got steamrolled. No free kick, though. And it will be a bounce almost right. next to the centre circle. Time on to play, Pete. So about five minutes to go in this match. Fitzgerald need three goals to uh, to win it. Loveridge on right centre wing gets clear of Big Purser on the McCarthy. He hasn't had a bad job since he came on. Up to full forward, Dunstall. Oh, great mark! He's got a good pair of hands, this fellow Bob, hasn't he? Yes, he's done everything that's been asked of him and. Uh, Kennedy, who are there's a loose play by Hawthorne, uh, by Footscray, I should say. There were two players, Kennedy and Judge, both in the square on their own. And I think every Footscray defender thought that Dunstall was going to go back and have the shot at goal, and they completely forgot about that short man dropping in there. Or well, two men, as you mentioned, Bob. Judge has kicked three goals since he came on, I think at quarter time from memory. He would have to fall over to miss it. He hasn't. And that's the ball game. Judges kick four goals. Hawthorne 16 13 109. Footscray 13 9 87. It would be expecting a lot, I think, for Footscray to get up from here. We'll watch that play again. Dunstall's strong mark. And again, has done the job up at full forward. And of course, and uh, when you talk about uh, first year players, I, I think uh, under the jurisdiction, the way they look at it, because he played in Queensland, he, he's considered a senior player, but it's been a great effort by Jason Dunstall to come from uh, Brisbane and settle in as he has in his first season. Certainly has, Bob. 27 minutes have gone in the final quarter. 22 points the difference now. Line ball, the knockout. Ball booted out of the pack towards Royal. Royal, left half forward flank for Footscray, still showing plenty of running. He's gone for a pass. Schwab intercepting for Hawthorne. McCarthy gets it back to him. A hurried hand pass goes over to Ears and Hawthorne get clear. And Hawthorne look as though they'll go into the grand final for 1985 as Hawkins knocks the ball out of bounds. And he's played a fine game here today, Bob. He certainly has, Lou. Uh, he's been a, an excellent player from start to finish. And uh, over the three games that the Footscray have played, Doug Hawkins has really shown that touch of class. 27 and a half minutes gone. About two and a half minutes to go before... Hawthorne, as I said before, will go into the grand final. Picked up here now by Lester Smith. A long kick over there, half forward, up towards the forward pocket. But it'll beat the pack, and it's out of bounds. So it's out of bounds down there in the forward pocket position for uh, Hawthorne, and the free kick to go to Brad Hardy. And, of course, no doubt the winning move uh, for uh, 
Four bombers the mere fact that Alan Jeans brought uh, Matthews on, and he's been a real match winner in this last quarter. As I said before, once a champ, always a champ. It's Bahaja taking that ball at uh, half back, driving it back towards the wing position, but they're grabbing mark from everywhere now, Hawthorne. They really got their backer up and uh, a mark degree. A hand pass coming over to Russo. A long kick over the half four line. Matthews again. He dropped that one, but he tapped it on. But he's done his job here today. There's no doubt about that. At the back is um, McLean to take the mark. If there was interference that time to Langford, and he'll take the mark out there on the centre wing position. Just over the 28 and a half minute, I reckon about a minute to go. And a short pass, and Lester Smith's got it. So this going through the motions now, Hawthorne, knowing very well they'll be in the 1985 grand final to play Essendon. And I reckon Footscray certainly butted them up for the Bombers next week. It's been a real tough match here today. A few bruises, weren't there? Picked up by Cordy, a hand pass coming out and out of Daniels. Footscray still having a go. They haven't thrown the sponge in as the ball goes over their half forward line. Swab having a great battle there with Bandit. Finally picked up by Bandit. Doesn't know where to go now. He's clear. Goes for a pass, looking for Beasley. Bounces the wrong way. That's how his luck's going now. It's picked up by New. And Hawthorne take the ball away from the danger zone once again. It beats uh, Hawkins. And this has given a chance here for McLean. A hand pass back to Hawkins again. Finally picked up that time by Gronerwig. And a shot at goal, but he's off target. Well, is it a goal? It's a goal. But it's too late, I'm afraid. Just on the 30 a minute mark of this quarter. 16-13, 109 Hawthorne. The Footscray, 49-93. And so I'd say there's 36 very tired players out there at the moment. There's... Uh, Hawkins gets a, a bad bounce. McLean picks it up well. A long hand pass. And Hawkins leaving it for Groner Wagon, who had time to steady and to finish it off with a nice goal. Groner Wagon's first goal coming up at the 29 minute mark. 29 and a half minute mark, just on 30 minutes. And that's now Neil Cordy showing a good turn of speed. Up to half forward. Morrison Ears go to spoil for Hawthorne. Lester Smith taps the ball to ground, but it's picked up by Bamford. Shoots it out to McLean. Footscray not done yet. Here's Royal. He'll put this one through as well. He fires, shoots, and that's another one to Footscray. So two quick goals, but it's probably too late. Thirty and a half minutes gone. Only ten points in it now. <laughs> You've got to give them credit, I'll tell you Bob. what. <laughs> they certainly they're hanging in there all the way and uh, making the most of the mistakes that are made and they're cleaning the thick of things again getting it out to Royal, and as we've said a few times, uh, there's no disgrace to Footscray today. Uh, it's one thing to be thrashed as they were the other week, but today they really hit back and shown that they will be a force to contend with next year. No, nope, they're still not done this year, Bob. 31 minutes gone. Out of the centre circle, who's going to get it? Down to Luffridge, there's the same. A great fight back by Footscray to get to within 10 points, but Hawthorne will be through to the 1985 Grand Final against Essendon. The third year in succession of these two clubs will have fought out the BFL Cup. Hawthorne 16-13, 109 as Alan Daniels lifts off. Footscray 15-9, 99.